Okay, we are live. We are live. All right. Hey, J9, how's it going? Okay, we have some people coming on. I'll give it a couple minutes before I get started. And uh, we'll dive right into it. Okay. All right. Glad you made it, J9. Okay. All right. All right. We got a couple more people coming in. Okay. I want to welcome you to tonight's uh, Late Night Live. Okay. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Three Brad Circus. Okay. Um now, when, when choo choosing to interracially date uh, or even, you know, that could lead to marriage, you want to choose right, right? And uh, for black women, you need to, if you're interested in white guys, you got to choose the right Brad, okay? Beyond what people think, us white guys, we might look alike, but we're totally different, okay? None of us are alike. Well, I would say that for any people, any group of people, you know, in a group, there's always individuals, always people are different. And uh, three Brad Circus with white men, you don't know what you're going to get. You you really don't. And I'm a white guy and I'm going to be honest. You, you, you don't know what you're going to get. OK, but you, you could find out. And uh, I'm going to cover this. I made a. A live show a while back about the three Brad Circus. So this is like kind of like part two. Um, which is the right Brad to choose from, right? And there's three categories I'm going to cover. Um, but anyway, uh, J9, good to see you. Caroline's Dreams. Alana Bass. Hope I pronounced that right. I If I pronounce your name wrong, just... Please forgive me. I'm not good at pronouncing at my pronunciation. But uh, we're going to talk about the three Brads, the three Brad circus. Okay. And it is a circus. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, and you got to know how to choose right. And there's three Brads we're going to cover. Okay. And these are the Brads you see in your everyday life. Okay. Now, how do you know which Brad is willing that wants to date black women or that is interested? You don't really know because you can't read minds, but every group, there are white men that would love to date black women. And they've done studies and found that white men are more willing to date black women than black women are willing to date white men. That is, that is true. They've done studies on that. And, uh, but there's quite a few on both sides that are willing to date each other. Black black women, white men are ready to receive each other. There, uh, there's an echo. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can fix it. Um, I don't know why there's an echo. Let me make sure my phone's off. Okay. Maybe it's a setting. I don't know. This internet stuff is uh, all right. Is there still an echo? Can you guys hear me okay? Um, let me see. My Maybe my microphone's acting weird. Um, give me a one if you can hear me okay. If I still have an echo, give me an E. Throw an E out there. No echo? Okay. Awesome. Thanks, at least on my end. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry if you get an echo. Sometimes, you know, the settings will do that. Uh, okay, you see, you hear me? Okay, good. All right. Um, but, and, and I know J9 had a question mark. Was it about the three Brad Circus? It, it's coming to a town near you. <laughs> and, uh, okay, I already put that up there. All right. Okay, we got some ones. Okay, but there, there, 
okay, when, when it comes to people, we're all different, right? We're all individuals, okay? Now, when you're seeking to inter, interracially date, right, you got to choose the right person. And that's with any group. And uh, th there's different uh, brads, and it creates a little circus going here. And what I'm going to categorize it in is the three brad circus. And we're going to show you some brads. Um, some of the pictures I I'm going to show you as actors, they're, they're playing a certain part. It's not necessarily the how they live their life, right? And uh, But I took some pictures, and I'm going to explain each brad that I show you. And because uh, some brads, you know, like to appropriate other cultures that tried to, that would like to have an experience uh, with some with a group of people in a different racial group, right? Um, yeah, and, and then there's those those brads and, and, and different economic level, right? Because you know there's all different economic levels, and, and us as white people, we're from the bottom to the top, right? And uh, just like any group of people. Um, but some of us are where we're at because of choices we make, because of the motivation we got. Sometimes some of us get more privileges than others. I, I mean, it's just life. But a lot of times how far we go in life is decisions we make, right? Um, but I'm going to cover these three brads. And, and I made a little slideshow for you guys. And I'm going to cover each each one. There might be a couple pictures of the same Brad, you know, the same mindset of a Brad. And uh, just be aware, each in the three ring circus. Now, you can find a good husband in each of the three. And you can't find a bad one. But looking on what you see, there's one group you, that's probably going to have more success than the other two. I mean, that's just the way it is. But not to say you can't find love in each ring of the three ring circus. You know, whatever bride you choose. Okay. Now, let me put on the screen here. And this is our first brad in the circus. Okay. This here, and this is from Napoleon Dynamite. You, you remember this show, right? Uh, I forget his name, but she's, he, he's, trying to appropriate a, the stereotypical black culture. And he's with his black queen, La Fonda. I think that was her name. You know, it was, you know, they're playing on the stereotype comedian, but there are some white guys that dress like this. They're out there. They do. They, they want to, if they might look up to someone in a different racial group, like someone that dressed like this, he might look up to his, his black friends that, you know, and wants to be like them, wants to have the black experience, but he's a white guy, you know, but <laughs> this guy, he's not, and maybe he grew up within a certain culture, because we all are products of our environment, are we not? So, but looking at this picture, he's overdoing it. Um <laughs> But it, it was comedy in the movie, right? They played on the stereotypes, uh, you know, to get a laugh. But there are white guys that do dress like this guy that try to look like that. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll get with black women, right? And they'll use the slang and they'll dress a certain way. They might have their pants sagging, um, trying to play on the, you know, the stereotype. And... Uh, some of these white guys think they're cool and they're just, um, and there are some black women that, that might like that image, a, guy, a white guy acting like that. Most black women I've talked to, they're not into that. <laughs> but, um, but that's part of the circus. He's living a life. Now, if he didn't grow up in that culture, he's probably a follower. He's probably don't, you know, he, he's looking for a group to belong to. And uh, he's trying to appropriate a certain culture. Now, I'm not saying all white guys that might dress with the little hip-hop fashion 
are trying to appropriate because maybe that's part of their environment and we are part of our environment. But usually guys that dress like this, he's overdoing it. He's trying to live the black experience. And he might not even really be into her because he's trying to be, he's a white guy trying to be black. Kip, Kip and LaFonda, yeah. So, you know, he might just be trying to live the experience. And he's, if he's trying to act like a black guy, he feels he has to have a black girlfriend. What's with the do-rag? Well, it's part of the culture, right? It, 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 I don't know what it does for his hair. I don't know. But, <laughs> and, and this was an actor. He probably don't live like that. He's just being funny. Ha ha, right? Um, but there are people that will dress like this and a white guy that's trying to be black. What do they call it? Um, a tie rad, a Brad trying to be a Tyrone, a tie rad. And then you switch it around like a black guy trying to act white. That would be a Byron. Okay. Um, but anyway, that, that's your first Brad in the three Brad circus. How many of you know white guys that will actually dress like this? I've seen that. Um, there's a woman I work with at my work, where I work. She's a, she's a black woman, and she's got a white boyfriend, and he he comes in and picks her up wearing, uh, what, what's that hair stuff? Corn rolls. I mean, a white guy with corn. Yeah. I, I mean, but, hey, dress how you want. Look, if that makes you happy. Go ahead. <laughs> but anyway, I to me, it seems kind of silly. But, you know, whatever makes you happy. Okay, let's continue. But that's your first Brad in the three ring circus. Your uh, Tyrad. He's a Brad trying to be a Tyrone. So we'll call him Tyrad with his Queen LaFonda. Okay. And, and look, he's he's got his eyes partially closed. She's kissing him on... You know, he's just living his best life. All right, Tyrad. Thumbs up to you, brother. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, check out this guy with his muscular physique, right? Um, this guy, you know, he's in the trailer park. Um, you know, he he's... You know, he probably likes uh, NASCAR. He likes bush beer in a can. And uh, he probably, you know, drinks a lot on the weekends. <laughs> but um, And uh, looking at him stereotypically, you see he's in his trailer park. Um, and uh, he, he probably watches NASCAR and... Uh, He's one of, and I think he's from the, I think this picture's from the, a show called the Trailer Park Boys, or, but, uh, but, you know, it just seems like he's got a shirt off. Me, I, I would, I would keep my shirt on. Um, I, I got some fat too, so I'm not judging him. Um, but he just thinks he's cool and, uh, you know, he's living his best life. So that's another Brad you got to choose from, you know, and it looks like he don't work out much. Um, I don't know. I'm not judging anybody from a trailer park, but uh, it just seems like sometimes people might get in this mode because they're just doing enough to get by. But that's your uh, trailer park, Brad. And uh, anyway, let's go to another one. Okay, okay. And this is the king of the trailer park, right? He... uh. He's got his hairdo, the sideburns. He's probably fantasizing, trying to look like Elvis. And this guy, he's, uh, this Brad is, uh, you know, the leader in his bowling league. You know, he likes bowling. He also likes Bush beer in a can. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, it looks like he's gained a little weight. Well, that happens, you know, but, uh. But I would say, um, <laughs> but but you can go for the trailer park, okay? Um, you know, and uh, you see that beautiful trailer. He's just put out a, a green fence, 
And uh, I don't know. What do you think, ladies? I, I mean, it, it it's a trailer part, but you know what? He probably owns this trailer. So, you know, he's probably got a an okay uh, blue-collar job, you know? He, he dresses a little better than the other guy in the trailer park. The other guy just thinks he's cool with his shirt off and sunglasses. But, uh, you know, he's trying to get the Elvis look, you know, and he's got the hairstyle. So, um, <laughs> but that that's another Brad to choose from. So you you got the appropriator. You got the trailer park Brad. Um, you know, definitely blue collar guys here. Um you know, they have to have that nine to five job, nothing wrong with it. And maybe he's lives in a trailer park. You might look down on the guy, but Hey, he's got a home, right? He's at least got a place to live. So, I mean, I'm not going to throw, make fun of him too much. He's got something going on and, uh, you know, he takes care of his, you know, he just put a fresh cone of green paint. That's his favorite color. And, uh, you know, that's the color of his bowling league shirt. And you can tell he's a bowler. He likes bowling. He watches NASCAR. And I like NASCAR, too. So no shade to him. And, uh, you know, but these guys, Bush beer is their their thing on the weekend. That's why they're kind of heavy. But uh, anyway, that's your trailer park brads right there. Um, and honestly, on the two brads, you could actually find a good husband, even the guy that's appropriating. He might really love black women, right? And these guys also deal with a little weight. Meh. You know, if you don't mind the trailer park, I mean, the grass looks green. Looks like it's taken care of. So, but anyway, you know, you know a lot of uh, stereotypes about the trailer park, right? <laughs> a lot of, but anyway, let's continue. Okay, what? Okay. All right. This Brad here, ladies, this is the one most of you ladies are going to pick. This Brad right here. He's young, good looking guy. He's in a suit. Um, he's probably, he's works in the corporate world. He looks real young. He's probably like 23, 24, right? This guy's got his life ahead of him, right? And being that young, he's probably a child of privilege, okay? He's going to work for his father's company, the, the corporation his father owns, and he's living his best life. And he's saying, hey, look at me. You know, you know you want me? Look at me. That's what he's saying. Just look at him. <laughs> Would you go for that, Brad? I'm. He's, he's got money. He's got good-looking dude, right? Young guy? I don't know. What do you think, ladies? I mean, would you go for that? That's the high-value Brad right there, right? I mean, he's not ugly at all, right? Looks like old money, right? But he's probably, you know, got living a life of privilege. Probably his parents, you know, are well off. His father owns a corporation. And one day he's going to take over and he's going to be the CEO. That I mean, where I work, there there's people like that that are really well off that make us blue collar guys, you know. But there's your Brad. That's your high value Brad right there. Um, what I would say about this though, ladies, and I'm gonna caution you, this guy's attractive, right? Women would throw themselves at this dude. But here's the thing. Look at him. It, does that a, is that a sign of privilege? He looks kind of cocky there. So, some Brad you find in the circus, that high-value Brad, might be a good-looking dude, might have plenty of money, very confident. But does he really care for you? Does he? Because everything to this Brad comes easy. Everything... Privilege life, women, you know, he's well off, got a good family, gets what he wants. Can you trust this, Brad? I mean, women be saying, gosh, you got a good looking dude, right? Or is he just, or does everything come so easy that he don't really appreciate it? Okay, what do you think about this, Brad? Let's go back to the bowlers. This guy, right? 
He's not the best looking dude. He's overweight. Um, but he's got a place. He's got a place where he lives. We're going to make fun of him because he's in the trailer park. But is that a bad thing? Because I know people that live in a trailer park because that's all they can afford. But they have a home. They have stability. They can take care of a family. This guy, not the best looking guy, but he might have the biggest heart. You know? This guy might be something to look into if, you know, looks ain't the thing. This guy, uh, he just doing the minimum to get by. He's got a shirt off. He's got a beer gut. He really don't care. He thinks he's cool because he's got a cowboy hat and sunglasses. Uh, I would stay away from that, Brad. He, he's cocky and got nothing going on. <laughs> this Brad, he's got a big heart. He belongs to a bowling league. He's He's overweight. Yeah, women ain't looking his way, but he's probably got a big heart. Who knows? <laughs> he's got a, yeah, it looks like he might have a mullet, but he's kind of living in the retro look. He's got his, like, a, looks like a 1980s vibe shirt. He's got the gold chain, if you can see it there. Yeah, you know, with the Elvis look, kind of, sort of. Yeah. But you can find a good guy like that. You can. Um, but let's go back. Okay. High value, Brad. Everybody wants this dude, right? Okay. You got to look closely. Just because someone's attractive don't mean they care for you. Don't mean they're going to stay with you. He might want you to be so fit and you'd be, um, breaking yourself down in the gym to live up to this guy's expectations. Cause he's good looking. He gets what he wants. He's successful, powerful. Got the family, right? There are many Brads like this dude. Okay? But when things come easy, do you appreciate it? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's continue on. Let's see what Brad we get next, right? We went from the trailer park Brad, you know, the low value, you might say, to the high value, the corporate Brad. What do you think? You got to look closely, not just the appearance. Because if you just go to the appearance, everybody's going to pick this dude because he's the best looking guy out of the bunch. But you you need more than looks. You need character and heart and love, right? So let, let's continue. What Brad will we get next? All right, the soldier. Okay. This guy, he, he he's in uh, combat operation. He's got his gear. He's got his M4 carbine. He's got his uh, night scope on top of his uh, ACH. You know, he's he's got his uh, ammo. He he's got his basic combat load. Okay, I I, I know because I I wore that uniform. But this guy, this is a blue collar Brad. This is a soldier. This guy, this is what makes America what it is. This guy will. Give his life for his country. He loves his country. He's patriotic. He's had to work for everything he's got. So he has character. And he's a no-nonsense dude. Let's go and see him again in a different uniform here. All right, there he is. Standing at attention. He's got his uh, his uh, battle dress uniform. This is the new... Uh, Battle dress fatigues that the Army's wearing. Army and Air Force are wearing this, right? You see him. He's standing at attention. He's he's proud. He's patriotic. This is a blue-collar dude. This guy, this is what makes America go, okay? He's the middle class. He's the everyday Joe, really. But he loves his country. He, he's proud of his job and what he does. This is the blue-collar Brad. Okay, and it don't necessarily have to be the soldier. Okay, that can be like the truck driver, the construction worker, the guy that does the nine to five job that makes America move. This guy is protecting our nation. This guy is, to me, a high value Brad. He don't have a lot of money, but he, he works hard for what he's got. And uh, he, he's doing a job that most Americans won't do. Just being honest. So what do you ladies think about this, Brad? 
Uh, he's probably not rich, but he he makes enough to he pays his bills. He's got character, um, squared away. He's got discipline, so he'll probably end up getting a good job. You know, and not saying the army's not a good job, it is. But what I'm saying is, when he finishes his career, whether he gets out after his service or he retires, this guy's going somewhere just because of his character. He don't have the family connections. He don't have the privilege. He's a hardworking guy, and he knows what it means to be be in this country and uh, the blessings that he's got. You know, the corporate guy, he could probably buy his way out of going and serving. This the dude can't. He's 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 got to work and pull his way through. So what do you ladies think? Is this Brad an attractive Brad? Or you want to go back to the good looking corporate dude that's got it all? This guy is loyal too. He'll be with you to the bitter end. That's what I see. Now, we don't know these people, but the images, think about it. And this is the circus you're going to get, ladies. What you think is high value and the best choice, not necessarily is. Okay? But anyway, let's continue. All right. So you got the three Brads, right? The trailer park Brad? That ain't necessarily a bad thing because I'm not going down people in trailer park. I know people that live in the trailer park. and and. You know, maybe they like living in a trailer. You know, it's a home. It's a place to live. They're providing a roof over their head for them and their families. Uh, not Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, we make fun of it, but seriously. You know, I know people live in a trailer park because that's what they can afford. Um, you know, but what do you think? The first guy in the trailer park looked like he didn't care. He just... Has his shirt off and just whatever. He's going to do the bare minimum. The other guy, I think, really had pride in where he lived. He's not an attractive. He's a little overweight, um, but he probably had a big. He's probably got a big heart. But let's continue because in the three Brad circus, us as Brads, us Brads that are willing to open up our options and get that prize, and I'm going to show you. These three Brads are going for a prize, okay? And I'm going to show you what I think a prize is. Okay, there you go. Now this, okay, this here, this ain't a Brad, of course. This is a Keisha, but look at this lady, right? She's got her uniform. She's a Marine Corps Staff Sergeant. You see the medals? I think one's a national defense. Uh, I don't know what the other two are. And the one's behind. But uh, she, she's she got her service stripes. Looks like eight years of service as a staff sergeant. Not bad. In the Marine Corps, that's pretty good, actually. But looks beautiful. Looks professional. You could fall in love with a woman looking like that. Seriously. And I don't know this woman. But look, look how she carries herself. Professional. And that's the prize right there. <laughs> So what Brad would she choose? <laughs> I wonder. Probably the soldier, right? Because she's a Marine, so it, it kind of goes together. And she would she wouldn't be she wouldn't go for the corporate dude, even though he's attractive. Nah, she could see right through that. And she's she sees him. He'd have to come with his A game and prove that he's not, you know, just after her for you know the experience that. He's not just used to privilege. The soldier, though, he, the soldier before, she probably get with him because she knows his character. She knows what he's uh, going for, right? So, what Brad? And, and, and I want you guys to vote. This, this young lady here, right? This Marine Corps Staff Sergeant. Tell me, which Brad would she pick? Number one is. The Brad that that that's a tie rad. The Brad that's trying to live the black experience. That's trying to appropriate a culture. That's number one. Number two is trailer park Brad. Or 
Number three, the blue collar soldier Brad. Which one would she pick? Four? <laughs> there ain't no four, Corey. You would pick four. I get it. I would pick four too. That's the the most attractive choice is four, Keisha. But seriously, tell me who should she pick in, in the three ring circus if she's willing to interracially date? <laughs> Tom Hanks' son, number three. All right, number one is the the guy with La Fonda, the guy with the do-rag, the, the tie rad, or the trailer park guy. And, and like I'm saying, like I think the second trailer park guy would be okay. Uh, is she a drill sergeant? I don't know. She could be. Um, she, you know, she probably. I wouldn't mess with her. Would Kip? <laughs> you be, would Kip be the best? Kip or the the guy in the bowling league or the guy with his shirt off that thinks he's God's gift to the earth, um, or the soldier. We are tired of inspiring a man to motivate. Motivate up. You basically said to build a man. Nope. To build a man. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, Kip was loyal too. Yeah, you know what? Here, here's the thing, Kip. He looks silly, right? But he, he, he would probably be loyal to that woman. He'd probably love her till the end of time. But he just looks like a silly weirdo. And he's a follower. Yeah. So anyway, I'm leaving this picture up because this is more pleasant to look at than the other ones. Huh. But, okay, let's go back. Kip. Come on, Kip looks like a good guy. He's a loyal dude. Look at him. He, he's enjoying it. LaFonda, you know, she's loving on Kip. She just loves Kip, how he wears that, that do-rag, you know, and uh, he's just a smooth operator. <laughs> Look at him. Who wouldn't want to be like Kip? I want to be like Kip. If I could be like Kip. <laughs> Kip. All right, Kip. All right. <laughs> All right. How about this guy? Look at his physique, ladies. Come on. Isn't that a trophy, dude? Wouldn't that be someone you'd want to hang out with? <laughs> Look at him. He thinks he's it, man. <laughs> so who go for this? I mean, come on. That's a high-value trailer park Brad there. All right. But this guy, you might laugh at this guy, but I think this guy would be, you know, and like I said, he probably owns his trailer. He's he's probably into the bowling league. Uh, he needs homemade meals. Yeah, he, he's spending too much time eating fast food. You can tell. Um, he goes to Burger King for lunch. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are doing that because it's easy, fast, and, and then he races home and, you know, gets with his bowling league on the weekends and thinks, you know, that's exercise, like that's going to do something. And it's not. I mean, bowling's fun, but it, it's, you know, it's no real exercise. Uh, he do it, does need homemade meals instead of fast food, Yes. Pizza Brad. Yeah, that's, you know what? He might be a pizza delivery guy too, Michael. I, I, I didn't think about that. And, and maybe that's why he's gaining weight because he delivers pizza. And, you know, but he probably handles his money well because he's got his own trailer. So he's doing something. He he's He's got some productivity going on. You know, Pizza Brad here, you know. Um, Brad, you... You got to quit eating pizza. And you know what? Stay away from the beer. It's not good for you. It's got a lot of carbs. Um, he, 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 yeah, he likes Elvis. You can tell he's trying to get that Elvis look. 
But, you know, that was cool in the early 70s, you know, when Elvis was around. Yeah, but now kind of uh, a retro look. But, I mean, if it makes you happy. Think the trailer park Brad is kind of cute? Well, he probably got a good heart, though. Um, abs are building in the kitchen. Um, yeah, and uh, it's about his mindset. Yeah, and, and you know what? You know, he, I, I've seen guys that look like this, guys like this, and, and they got good hearts. They're pretty decent dudes, you know, and, uh, you know, they might think he's weird because of his style and stuff, but that's what he likes. I don't know. He'll probably find a woman that's into that too. Um, he just might be in his Elvis phase. Yeah. We all go through it. Right. Um, you know, I haven't hit mine yet, but I don't know. It, it might hit me at 70. I might hit the Elvis phase. I don't know. It, it, the Elvis face, it hits at different times, and you don't know when it's going to hit, you, and there's nothing you can do. Once the Elvis face hits, you just you, you start looking like Elvis, it, and there's nothing you can do about it. it. It's just a cycle that us Brads go through. Johnny Bravo. Yeah, you know what? If he'd work out, he'd be a Johnny Bravo. Man, I miss that cartoon. That was a good cartoon. But Johnny Bravo never, you know, he never hooked up, did he? But, yeah, but he could be a Johnny Bravo. Go to the gym. Hey, uh, look, pizza Brad, uh, bowling Brad, go to the gym. Start working out. Get that Johnny Bravo vibe going. You might, you know what? He might end up, I didn't think about the Johnny Bravo, but that might work. You know, you get a little muscle tone and you get a little bit of, yeah, Elvis has left the building and the trailer park. Okay, let's let's move back. Okay. All right, there he is. That's the high value Brad. This is what all the ladies want right here. He's confident, dressed as well, got money. He gets what he wants. This is this is the Brad that uh, most women will go for. But let me tell you, most women won't get success with this because once he gets older, um, you know, he'll probably, you know, try because a lot of times people that are real good looking sometimes don't age well. And, and honestly, I've seen it happen. Like I remember girls in high school that were popular or beautiful and stuff don't look so good these days gain weight and they kind of didn't age well. This guy might be that. You know, he attractive now, but us white guys, we don't age that well. So I mean, and he he might be wanting someone that look like that looks like you back when you were young when he gets old. So he he probably would trade in for the newest model. Um but who's to say? I mean he might be a good guy, too. Maybe he's got a little privilege. Maybe he's good looking. Maybe he's got it all, but he's still got a good heart. That could be possible. But usually uh, people that got everything aren't as appreciative as people that have to work for it. In fact, you'd be better off probably with uh, Trailer Park Brad. You know, he, he would love you with all his heart. You just Support him on his bowling league because that's what he likes to do. Um, get a farm boy. Okay. I didn't put the farm boy Brad up there. But the soldier could be the farm boy because that's a lot of soldiers come from the farm. So that's probably where your farm boy is. But it just looks like, you know, super confident. Like, yeah, I'm the man and I know it. You know, this this is the farm boy here, I think, Michael. Right there, look. You could tell this dude, right? Just looking at him, you could tell he's got upper body strength here, his arms. You can you see some muscle through there. It, he's been training. He's been working hard, so he's in good shape. You know, so he might have come from the farm, maybe. 
you know, a, a lot of the farm boys are patriotic and stuff. A lot of them go in the military. Yeah, so that's probably your farm boy right there. And there's the prize. And uh, guys, what do you think? Rate her on 1 to 10. What would you say she is? Corey, Michael, what would you say? What would you rate her as? Just by looking at this picture. You don't know her, but what would you rate? Scale of 1 to 10. Or is that... Uh, that would be in the eyes of the... Be nine and a half, <laughs> Whitty. Nine and a half. That's a pretty good score. That's pretty high. I would say... Um, I don't really like rating numbers, but... Uh, I would say, looking at her, I mean, she's beautiful. She's professional. I would say, I would give her a 10. I just, you know what? <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't really see flaws, right? She's in good shape. Um, she's professional. Um, staff sergeant in the Marine Corps after eight years. Um, she's got some medals. She's been deployed. Um, she's, she's served. I mean, she's did her duty. Um, gosh, I would, how can I even say, I mean, but she's slender. Yeah. And, and being in the Marines, you would be slender because she probably, they're probably running the crap out of her, you know. I know when I was in the Army, I was really thin because we ran all the time. We were constantly working. Uh, 10, yeah, I give her 10. Michael Ray says smoking hot. Yeah, would you approach her? Let's say, let's say you're a Marine in the same rank and uh, they have a function. Would you try to talk to her? W would you uh, approach or would you, or would you stand at the end of the room and stare at her? On my, but and then she probably looks like she's I don't know how old do you think she is? She maybe twenties or thirties. Yeah, I mean, I would say. She'd probably be in her late 20s or early 30s, being at, at that rank. Uh, she's been in a while. So her service stripes say eight years because each stripe is four years. So she has at least eight years. So let's say she came in at 20, she'd be 28. But she could be mi middle age 30. She could be in her upper 30s because black women, you know, can be... Older and look much younger. I, I've seen it so many times. Yeah, she's very beautiful, yes. Um, she would catch my eye, and if I was single, I, I would approach. I, I would. And I'd probably probably expect to be getting shot down, but uh, it's, wor it's worth uh, risking rejection. Um, but anyway... So this is the best. Number four is the best choice. I'm just going to put it out there. Number four, you win. Number three, you're a good guy and you're a man of character, but four's got you beat. Sorry, man. Yeah. And you, you, you just too privileged, man. You got, you've had the comforts of life and everything's went your way. Um, I don't know. You know, you just, yeah. You, you got a big heart. You need to work on a diet. Stay away from fast food. When you go to the bowling alley, stay away from the pizza, man. Take, you know, do they have a salad you can eat at the bowling alley? I don't know. I know they serve pizza and burgers. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, you, you just don't care. I, I mean, you come home from work and you work the minimum. You got your old beat up trailer. You just don't care. Um, you know, all you care about is that, that, that case of beer, that bush beer in a can, and you just, that's, that's your life, man. But 
you know. <laughs> and you, this guy, okay. He's trying to appropriate. But I I bet guys like this and uh that, that played the character, I, I've seen these brats that will appropriate in, in their followers. They they um they want to belong to a certain group. And but he probably really cares for her. And uh, you know. <laughs> Okay, but I, I think number one wins because uh, for style and technique, <laughs> and he's actually with the woman. The other guys aren't. They're alone. Even the the high value Brad that's got all the money, the attractive one, he didn't have no one next to him. This guy does. He he's the <laughs> anyway. But let's go. I think him and her would make a good, good couple. What do you think? Both people serving our, our country, both professionals, both in great shape, both have character. What do you think? Three and four is a winner, or should she go for corporate Brad? <laughs> but anyway, let me go ahead and uh, pull this down. Okay, but seriously, guys, okay, and, and this video, I call it the three, re, the three Brad Circus, okay, and you got different individuals, right, and uh, you got an economic range, right, we're all in different economic levels, okay, and whether we got money or we don't, whether we live in a trailer park or a mansion, that that don't create character, okay? Um, that just means you got more resources than the other guy. Um, and in these three brads, you can find true love, okay? Even the first one, he seems kind of silly. I would be cautious on that because does he really like black women or is he trying to live the black experience as a white guy? You know, you got to think about that. And you can read off that. Um, and ladies, you really don't want to now, if he grew up with that and that's how he, that's part of his environment, but he looks like he's overdoing it. I think he's trying to appropriate and you got to think about that. Ladies, someone that's trying to be something they're not, what are they doing? Are they leading? Or are they following somebody? You, you know what I mean? Or does he really love black culture and he likes dressing that way? Or is he just trying to be something he's not? I don't know. Um, I would say he's trying to appropriate. But, you know, and, and then the second two Brad's in the trailer park. One don't seem like he cares. He's got his shirt off and sunglasses. He thinks he's he's got an ego, but he's, you know... Fat and out of shape. I mean, and I'm not giving them shade for being fat and out of shape. You know, I can use, lose pounds too, right? Um, you know, when you get in your 50s, you know, you got to watch it. So I'm not going in on them on that, but having your shirt off, um, yeah, I I just, I wouldn't do that. That's just me. Um, the other guy, he he's big, but he looks like, you know, he's got his house. He's seems stable. He's just overweight and he probably eats f too much fast food because he's in a hurry. He's working and people get caught up in that because it's easy. It's, you know, fast food's cheaper than healthy food. It, it really is. Um, but, you know, you're not eating those natural foods. It's going to tear up your body. But. You know, he's got something. He's you can you can pick this out. The guy, the corporate Brad, the one in the suit. He's attractive, right, ladies? He, he that's the look of success, right? Nice suit, good looking guy, in great shape. 
women would be after that guy, no doubt. But when everything comes so easy, do you appreciate it? I, I think the guy in the trailer park would, you know, you gave him a chance, you would be everything. You'd be his whole world. The good-looking guy, he might, yeah, it's great to be with you until he finds someone new because he gets what he wants. And not to say that would be, but you, you know where I'm going with this, right? And, and then the soldier. You know, he's got discipline, has to work hard. Nothing's come easy. Um, probably has some deployments, seen some tough times. Um you know, and probably lost some friends along the way. So he's been through real life situation. And that man's going to be successful because he's disciplined. He knows how to, you know, how, how to set his battle plans. He knows how to have goals. He knows how to make things happen. He's a survivor. He's a hard worker. And then at the end, the prize, you got the Keisha, right? And she's hardworking too. You got two alphas. Now tell me, I'm going to put this back on the screen. Is that an alpha woman or what? Is that an alpha man? Put these two together. Would you have a power couple? And you know what? In the military, you have a lot of interracial couples. A lot. A lot of interracial marriages. More so than out in society. It happens more in the military. And why is that? I, I'll tell you why. It's because in the military, we accept each other for who we are. We have to. We have to depend on each other. We have to have each other's back. And when it comes down to it, we ain't got time to work to worry about who looks like what or where they come from or the skin tone. We're just. And a lot of white guys will marry black women in the military. They do. I've seen it happen all the time. I was married before I went in the military. And, uh, you know, I fit right in. I was sold a white guy with a black wife. Nobody cared. Because a lot of guys had that. And, uh, but anyway, what do you think? Are these the two winners? I, I think so. But we don't even know these people. So, but going on what I see, and ladies, you gotta, you gotta look at all, all these, you gotta look at this three Brad circus, because that's what you're dealing with. You know, just because someone's, Attractive and got money don't mean they're the right choice. This guy might seem like the right choice, high value, right? He's got money, success. But is that the right choice? This guy, he's not real attractive, but he's got his own place. Got a big heart, I'm sure, right? This guy just don't care. He don't give a flip. He, he's he's just looking for the weekend to get drunk. And, you know, he might watch NASCAR or football game. He just don't care. And that guy, he's he, he already thinks he's the prize. He's God's gift to this earth is what he thinks. So to be with him, you got to be in the gym uh, most of the day. And you, I mean, and when you get older, you might not be as attractive to him. This guy, he, he he thinks he won the lottery if you give him a, if you give him a chance. <laughs> this guy, he he has what he wants. This guy's hardworking. He's got character. You know, he's proud of what he does. He works hard. Blue collar guy. It's what makes America go round. That's an alpha guy. He's making things happen. And, you know, he's doing it. He's doing a job that a lot of people will not do. He's got the strength and the fortitude to do it. 
And she does too. You got that power couple right there. But anyway, let's go ahead and take that down. But I, I, I know this is kind of funny and I'm making fun of these people we don't even know. But seriously, if you look into the image and you get to know people, you can see things. Okay? And everything I said out of what I see, it 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 don't mean it's absolutely factual or um you know the high value guy might just be a good looking guy that's got it all, but he he'll love you with all his heart. That could be, you know. Um you you might have a soldier that does his job well and loves his country, but he might not be a good husband or father. That can happen too. I mean, but generally, what I was talking about is generally true. It, it really is. Um, and usually the soldier has to work for what he's got. Um, you know, I, I've seen it play out. I, I've seen the trailer park guy that's not attractive but has a place to live and he don't got a lot of money, but he knows how to manage money and he's got a roof over his head and he's got a big heart. Okay. And people will look down on that guy because he's not attractive and don't have a lot of money, but he, he can provide. And when he gets married, he will provide for his wife and kids. They, they might not have the best. They might live in a trailer park, but he can provide. Um, you know, the corporate guy, he just, a lot of times, men like that, th their families are successful, so they're successful. You know, he, he might get in trouble at a young age, but his father bails him out, provides him a corporate job because that's his son, and later on might even get the company. You know, he kind of inherits the success. Not really work for it, but just given to him. Because of the family, the status, the privilege. Okay? Some people have that. So that's not to say he wouldn't be a good husband and father. But a lot of times they don't appreciate stuff because they didn't have to work for it. That soldier had to work for it. He had no choice. And, and he's disciplined because he understands life's how life can be hard, how life, you got to fight for everything you got, literally. And he's had to. So as we're having fun, making fun of these pictures, just think about the character of people and these three brads you see. And tell me if I'm not right. You, you've seen characters like this. You've seen the guy that, that'll act stereotypical black, right? That will date black women because he wants to have the black experience, right? You've seen them. How are these men? How do they treat women? Do, are they really into the women or they want to be part of the culture? Okay. And then the, the guys in the Charlie Park. From what I've seen, you can kind of look at people and kind of see what they're like. You won't know for sure till you meet them, but you get an idea, right? And that might be a little overgeneralizing people, but I, I, I've kind of seen people in that era and how they look, how they act. And, and the guys in the trailer park, you can tell how, from what I've seen, I've seen one guy that's cocky, don't care. They're both overweight. They're not the most attractive guys. But I see one guy that's cocky and one guy that, Seems like he'd probably have a big heart. And his trailer is actually well-maintained. The yard looks good, the grass, the trees. Just observing, the fence is painted green. It ain't faded. You, you can see things. Is that character? He's taking care of his where he lives. That shows That shows that he maintains it. That shows some discipline, right? I'm just saying, you can pick that out. And he's not a bad guy because he's not attractive and 
all he can afford is a trailer, that don't make him a bad person. He could be a good husband. He just don't have the resources that other people do. You know, Dizzy Shirt Bad was attracted. He just needed to work out. Yeah, I think so. I, I think that Brad has potential. The bowling pizza Brad. That's what I call him, the bowling pizza Brad. He's got potential. Okay. That guy, he don't care. But does that guy have potential? You can tell he's overweight, okay? But let's say he works out. Let's say he changed his diet. This guy can go to could, – could he become attractive if he changed his lifestyle, if he changed how he lives, uh, maybe change how he dresses? I mean, it's kind of – looks like an 80s retro look. I, I don't know. And the gold chain thing and the Elvis hair, it looks like he just should be in a retro museum. Um, you know, you got the the 70s and the 80s. And Does he have a mullet back here? You know, I don't know. Um, at one time, that was the style. But I'm not saying he's got a, maybe that's how he likes it. But I don't know. But this dude has potential. This guy, this is what everybody goes for right here. And the three Brad Circus, this is the top pick. Because what people focus on is looks and resources. And that's not bad. I mean, you want someone that's attractive that's got resources, right? But what's his mindset? Did he work for... Those resources? No, he can be an attractive guy. He's just born that way. Some some people are attract, more attractive than others. That's just the way it is. But where's his mindset? Where's his heart? Where's his character? Did he earn it? Or was it given to him? And this guy. Why is he there? Why is he a soldier? Is it because he's patriotic? Is it because he's seen it as an opportunity to learn a trade, to get some college, the GI Bill? Um, you know, people join the military for different things. A lot of people join it because they're patriotic. They want to serve their country. You know, people join it for the GI Bill, get some college money, improve their their life, learn a trade, learn a skill. Um, you know, I, I learned a skill in the Army. Um, you know, the army's propelled my career. Um, best thing that happened to me. I mean, my body's beat up and I'll pay for it later, but, um, you know, the army's provided me a way to take care of my family, led to the job I got now, taught me a skill. Um, you know, and I joined it cause I wanted to better myself and I was patriotic. And I'm a blue collar guy all the way. I, I I don't have no wealthy family. My my father was a teenager when I was born. My parents were teenagers, so we we started out in hard times. I and, and my father brought us into upper middle class because he would, you know, determined and worked hard. Um, but I got that blue collar mindset. Um. That's me. That's how, you know, I, my choice in life was to work hard or have nothing. Um, and, and nothing wrong with that. I've been successful in my blue collar career from the military and what I'm doing now. Trades are not something men should be ashamed of. Yeah, it's not. I mean, I learned to trade in the Army. A lot of people do. It, it helps you with your career later on. And, and one thing about the military, I've seen, you know, the Army's what you make it. it. It really is. That old commercial when it says, be all you can be, that, that said it all. Because if you don't put into it, 
you're not going to get nothing out of it. But if you put something in, you'll get something out. Um, you know, the military is not for everybody. It's not. And that's okay. If it's not meant for you, hey, you know, you can serve your country, believe it or not, without going in the military. But some people it's for. It was for me. I was meant to do it. Um, but, you know, man, that's a nice picture. <laughs> better stop. My wife's going to get mad at me. I'm looking at pictures, but no, seriously. But you got different people here, right? Different characters. What do they all mean? Which would you choose? Okay, let me go ahead and pull this down. Uh, I dated a veteran and he slept around. Well, I, I mean, just because you're a veteran don't mean you have character in all areas. You know, you can be patriotic, but your morals when it comes to dating, our marriage might be horrible. Um, not everybody in the military has great character and does everything right. So, I mean, I'm not saying that. They're, yeah, they're not all like that. I'm just saying, look at the person's character because he, yeah, and and, and you're you're certainly right. I I know a lot of men in the military that do their job well and love their country, but when it comes to women, they got problems. You know, some are cheaters, some are immoral. When it comes to that, that is true. The military is basically a product of society. But there, there are so many military men that got great character that wouldn't do that. That, you know. But yeah, you got to still vet. It don't matter <laughs> where they come from. Yeah, and that you learn things from that experience. Yes, and life is an education. It is. And ladies, I, I'm I'm not blowing smoke here. I, I'm not making stuff up. The stuff I'm saying is experiences I've seen in character. Now, yes, that is a generalization, but a lot of that is true. A lot of how people carry themselves, you can kind of tell a lot about them. The guy with his shirt off, with the sunglasses, did he look arrogant there? Like. Um, I don't know. And maybe he's not that way. Maybe he just likes to run around with his shirt off. I don't know. Or maybe his shirt's too tight around his stomach, so he took his shirt off. <laughs> but you could kind of see. And, and the Brad, that the good-looking guy, right? I don't know. What do you think? And... You know, you can't just go off what I looked at these and picked out what I thought based on different, based on experiences that I've seen people that are act this way. Generally, it might be true, but there's always an exception. Like I said, that guy that women would pick, the good looking guy in the suit that looks like he's got it all. That guy just might be the a guy that has has a good card. Maybe he's just got success and he just happens to be attractive and but maybe he maybe his parents have taught him character, taught him taught him well. I, I mean, you got to get to know people. You can't just go on what they look like and how they carry themselves. But that can be an indicator. My Brad is a Republican male who is educated and comes from a good family. He's never dated interracially before, and he and his love for me really shines through. He's very nurturing, protecting, and loving. Oh, that's nice. That That's sweet. And, uh, yeah, and here's the thing. 
Um, you can find true love interracially. And just because the white guy never dated a black woman don't mean he don't love black women. And, and vice versa, black women that never dated a white guy can be a good wife for a white guy. I've seen it. Um, and most people, honestly, most people date within their own race and marry with their own race. They do. That's statistically true. Um, and especially when it comes to white men and black women, we're the most race loyal. We really are. And I wouldn't say we're race loyal. But I, I just said the least likely to open up our options, really. Um, and that's going to change, and it is changing. But we don't marry out as much as other racial groups. We don't. But that don't mean we don't love black women. I, I mean, I've seen a lot of successful relationships when it comes to black women and white men. And a lot of them never dated outside their race till they met each other. But they find true love. My wife never dated a white guy ever. I was the first and she married me. So, I, I mean... Don't get caught up in that. You know, love comes in different colors, comes in different packages. Have that option open because you don't know. And like I said, that corporate guy, he might be a great guy. I, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, okay, look at this guy, super young, attractive. A lot of times people... And I'm basing that generalization on what I've seen in people that are attractive and that are financially set and things come easy. A lot of times when things come easy, people don't appreciate it. I mean, that's just human nature. Not to say that guy's like that. All this was just a generalization on what I see. Experiences that I have, I formed an opinion. Now, am I right on these guys? Maybe, maybe not. A lot of times I think I'd be right, though. Um, you know, the first guy, uh, Kip and LaFonda, they were actors. I don't know what they do in their real life. That was just a comedy movie. Okay, and I think these two overweight guys, I think they came from the some show called Trailer Park Boys. I think that's where they're from. So they're playing in that stereotype. So they're just really actors. But you see people in real life that carry themselves a certain way. And you can kind of pick up their their character sometimes. You know? So... But anyway, and, and and the soldiers, you know, I don't know if those were really soldiers. They look like it. They look fit. I, I mean, in that the Marine, that black woman that's a Marine, she looks like she'd be a Marine. She looks really fit. She looks professional. Her uniform looks good. I mean, you know, so does the man. So they might be real a real soldier and Marine. Who knows? Or they might just be models that just dress because they look good. You know, that could be too. Um, all right. All right. We're talking about conservative women. All right. <laughs> I love that you are conservative. Hey, I'm a conservative man. I, I believe in God. I believe in traditional marriage. I, I believe in the nuclear family. Uh, yeah. But anyway, guys, what, what do you think? I mean, just something to think about. And ladies, when you interracially date, look at, think about what I said. Don't take it as fact, but just think about it. And 
study people. When you when you date people, study them. See what they're about. See how they react around their family. Do they want to bring you home to meet their family? And I'm telling you, if a man or woman that's dating you don't want to bring you to meet their family, that's a red flag. And back in the day when I was dating in the 80s and 90s, and I loved black women, if they didn't bring me home to meet their family, I, I broke it off. I ended it. That was... That was my standard. And I always felt, if you can't bring me home to meet your family, I'm not that important. And we don't need to go any further. You know. And I understand why some wouldn't want to bring me home because a lot of them had fathers that didn't like that there was the white guy. I mean, I, I even had one father told me, no, what this thing was that you think you're going to have with my daughter ain't going to happen. I mean, he straight up told me. Um, but, you know, my thing is, is uh, open up your options, okay? Get to know people because you might find the love of your life that might not look like you. And, and you know what? That's okay, and I've seen a lot of couples that are successful, interracial couples, black women, white men. And I know it's successful. We've seen stats of it, the longest lasting, right? Yeah, that ain't hard for me to believe at all. I look at my own life and I compare it to others. And the stuff I say about black women, and I compare it to my wife, because my wife is a black woman, right? But I've seen character in different black women that are doing amazing things. And, and in general, I, I'm seeing a lot of black women doing amazing things. I'm seeing a lot of good qualities. And, and I talk about that. And it's true. Now, are all black women like that? No. But in generally, a lot of them are. A lot of them got big hearts. A lot of black women are loving and loyal and you know, if they love you, they're going to give you everything. I've, I've seen it. And, and I'm not just talking about my marriage, but I've seen it in other marriages. I've talked to white men that are married to black women. And what they say about black women is the same things I'm saying. It's like I'm echoing. They're echoing what I'm saying. And I don't. we don't even have to know each other, but we're saying the same things. We're, we're talking about it, it, it's amazing. And it's like black women and white men, we're meant to be together. And I know people think I'm crazy. I know people think that I'm just making that up because I'm in an interracial marriage. No, I've seen it. I'm seeing it. The things I do for my wife, you know, and, and how I treat her and the love I show for her, it's like... When I look at her, I'm looking at a reflection of me because she's doing the same thing I'm doing. We're putting each other first because, and we're loyal. And ladies, I would tell you, you want a white guy that's a good man? Go for the traditional Brad, the traditional Brad that's got family values, the conservative Brad, the one that, you know, ha has some character that's got his basics together that believes in family, that believes in marriage, that that is a man of faith. That is the best option right there. You get with that man, you're going, you're going to be that power couple. Seriously. How would you be with the woman if you didn't meet her parents? I honestly... I would break it off. I, I would because here's the thing. If you, if we're dating and you care about me and you say you love me and you can't bring me home to meet your parents, you really don't love me. That's how I feel. Uh, and, and I understand some situations are hard, but, you know, you got to stand up for me. If we're in an interracial relationship, just like I got to stand up for you. And, 
every woman I dated, I brought home to my parents. And there was so many black women I dated back in the day. What are they going to say? They just got used. That's just, okay, that's our son. That's what he likes. And it was easy for me because my parents, my, my father, the only concern he had is, is she a good woman? Will she be good for me? My mom was the same way, really. They, they just wanted their son to have a good wife. They didn't care what she looked like. So I was fortunate that way. I was blessed. So I didn't have to deal with that nonsense. And I get it. Some women do. But I always felt if I'm not important enough to for you to bring me home to meet your family, I'm not that important. Because if we're going to go any further, you're going to have to stand up for me like I'm going to have to stand up for you. And, and if we can't bring you home, if we can't bring each other home, then what are we doing? I think the percentage was 44% less likely to diverse as of, yeah, I think so. And you know what? I think it went up. I, I think our stats are getting even better as we go. We're having success when people How long was it when you brought Sandy to meet your parents? Um, two days after I met my wife, Sandy. <laughs> no, I take that back. I dated, I went on two dates with my wife and I brought her home. I Real quick, I didn't waste time. And you know what? Sandy brought me home right away. There was no issue with that at all. Um, my wife's family accepted me. They did. And all of her family is amazing. You know, and she even brought me to her extended family, you know, in Texas and, and Mississippi. And I had no problem at all. In fact, my wife's family is awesome. I love my wife's family. I consider them my family now. Well, they are by marriage, but. I feel like I fit right in. I, I don't know. They just good people. I just but yeah, I brought my wife home right away. I always did. But like I said, and to be fair to these young ladies that had problems bringing me home, they were def dealing with a different situation. And I get that. I just for me to be in a relationship. It, it, you got to be all in or nothing. It, it just, that's my mindset. I want to be everything to you because when I give you my heart, you're everything to me. When I was in a relationship, I gave everything. Just, you know, you were everything to me. So I wanted to be everything to you. Um, and, and, and I get it. That was just dating. But I poured my heart and soul into that. Because if I wanted to date somebody, I was really into them all the way. And, you know, and, and I'm in a marriage where we're like, I'm totally into my wife. And she's totally into me. And, and we, and, and if you're not everything to each other, you shouldn't be in a relationship. You know, you got like that one song, I want to be your everything. I do. And I, because you're my everything. It's all or nothing. That, that's my mindset. And that's why I was like that. That's why if you didn't bring me home, I'm not everything to you. So what are we doing? And, and some people say, well, you should have waited and gave her a chance because, you know, it's hard. And yeah. I, it might have worked. Maybe she would have later on got her courage. Maybe her, her dad would have came around and it would have been all right. I don't know. But then again, maybe she would have never brought me home. We have to be married in secret. I, I mean, I'm just saying. Um, let 
but my thing is, is if I'm not everything, it, it, it's no good. Um, you know, because I'm giving everything. Does that make sense? E even, and, and I will say this, and, and even in my marriage, even when I want to be intimate, if my wife's not in, into it, it's no good. It's it, it's more of, and how can I say this? It's like if you're not all into me, it's no good. It, it's like, I don't know. It, do you guys understand what, <clears throat> where I'm coming from with that? And it's not an ego thing. It's it just that, you know, when you love somebody, you want them to love you with all their heart. And if they don't, it just, it, something's wrong. It just, you know, but that's where my mindset is. And also continue to grow our spiritual, yeah. Yeah. And marriage is a spiritual thing. Um, you know, and when you talk about marriage and you love somebody, you love them with everything. You love them in all areas. The mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the physical, everything. But that's what a marriage is supposed to be. And... You know, a lot a lot of times we do this backwards. We're not we're supposed to get in, get to know each other and develop friendship, court, and then when we get to the marriage, all that other stuff comes in. But but it's like we put the you know the carriage before the horse, and we're trying to go in the physical contact before we even really know each other. When that's supposed to be within marriage. You know, and we think that's love because we're having, we're, we're in the physical act instead of really getting to know someone and really loving somebody. What if the man gets frustrated not being intimate with you when you are not married yet? Well, biblically, you're not supposed to get intimate till you're married. According to the Bible, you're not supposed to, okay? Um, and it used to be that way in our society, but things have changed so much that men will think if you're not intimate with them, you're not interested in them. And, and, let's, and that's what I would say. You need to get with someone that's on the spiritual level you are, that, you know, takes the Bible for what it means and wants to live the godly life. Then they understand that that comes within marriage. Then they understand it. And, and you can, and I know people that have saved themselves for marriage, men and women. I mean, you can do it, but you've got to be on the same page. But here's the thing. It's dangerous to get intimate before you're married. Because is that love true? Or is it just lust? Or, you know, you might love him with all your heart, but he just might be lusting after you. Or vice versa. Then what? Then you've given up your body to somebody and went into the sexual act. Now your mind's messed up because you're thinking it's more than, it, than he or she's thinking. And if the love's not there, what did you just do? For one, they fulfilled their lust. For the other, their heart's broken. They just gave them, given themselves up to a man that's not even wants to be married to him. Um, you know, and I understand that. But that's how society is. But it's not right just because people are doing it. Hey there, Corey. How you doing, brother? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm just uh, living my circus life and uh, 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, you know, I just, I just thought I would talk about this, and uh, I don't know if you remember way back I did a, a live called the Three Brad Circus, and this is just what I see. And I tell ladies to look out for this this type of stuff because us white guys, believe it or not, we're not all the same. Oh no, <laughs> we are so different. It's not even funny. Um, but I was looking at those pictures and just having fun. But I kind of see, kind of just by looking at these guys, kind of their mindset. And I know it's a generalization. But you look at that guy with his shirt off, sunglasses up. You tell he's overweight, right? And he had like a cocky look, like he's a bubba. Huh? <laughs> he's a bubba. He's a bubba. Yeah, but he he thought he's I don't know. He thought he was sexy. Yeah, you know, and he, he probably <laughs> he did. That's the look I got. <laughs> And then the other guy was like, well, he looked like more modest. He was he was overweight too. And he kind of dressed funny. He looked like he was he belonged to a bowling league. Um, you know, and he had, but if you look at his trailer, and, and here's things I pick out by what you see. And I tell ladies this because look around, observe. Look at his trailer. It looked clean, right? Mm -hmm. What we might make fun of him because he lives in a trailer, right? That stereotype trailer park life. But you look at that trailer, it was clean. You look at this gate, it was green, but it was painted. It wasn't faded. You look at the grass, you look at the tree, it looked like it was manicured, like it was taken care of, right? Mm -hmm. So he had to do some yard work to get it to look like that. So he, oh, he probably, probably in the contract. Well, it could be too. It, you know, the trailer park, they might have groundskeepers that come and do it for them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just little observations. And, well, you uh, know, it's funny. The first guy, he looked like he had muscle, but it was buried under a keg of beer. But the second guy, those bags under his eyes, uh, he didn't have nowhere near the muscle. He didn't look as healthy to me. Yeah. But I, he was I think he, compensating for the with the hairspray trying to make up for the <laughs> oh yeah with the I mean he had but, a full head of hair, you know. You gotta give the guy that for sure. Right? <laughs> you gotta give him that, right? No, I but I can't grow it. <laughs> no, but the thing of it was is he's attempting he's taking it looks like he's taking care of what he's got. Even his hairstyle, even though it's outdated, um it, it's neat. It it's it's taken care of. Um, you know, and he tried to have a little fashion with his shirt that hurt the eyes. He had some gold chains. I think he was trying to get the retro 80s look. And somebody said that they thought he had a mullet. I don't know. He might have. Um, well, see, that's the thing about me. When I see the hair and the chain and the flashy shirt, I see yeah. overcompensating. Yeah. And I mean, that, as a man... That's that's all I see. The other guy, you knew who he was just by looking at him. But the guy in the shirt, it, uh, I don't know. To me, those those bags under his eyes, they, that health is an issue. Of course, yeah. the other guy, he's not going to be too. <laughs> he ain't worried about it. He don't even care. Yeah, he, he's done. He, he's probably got a overweight Becky in his trailer, and he's happy and hey. Whatever. He threw, he threw his shirt in the bonfire and walked off with a keg is what he did. <laughs> you right. He went and got <laughs> a 12-pack of bush beer in a can and said, you know what? This is my best life. <laughs> like, you know, you take the guy in the suit and you uh -huh. put him in a pair of work jeans and a flannel shirt, yeah. you know, and give him a 4 by pickup, he'd look pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean, that guy... Um, that's that's the one all the ladies would go for because he was attractive. He was a young guy, um, and, and he dressed real nice. So I, I mean, cocky, though. yeah, cocky. he looked cocky. Like, hey, look at me. Yeah, I'm everything. Yeah. 
you know, so you probably don't appreciate because everything comes to them easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you can pick out little things like that. Just because he was attractive and got money don't mean he's going to care for you or take care of you. He looked um, like the type of guy that would fight a woman for a mirror. Yeah, he did. And, and he probably would. Yeah, he, he was the pretty boy type. You can tell. Um, Carolyn's asking me if I'm nervous to meet my black wife. Who said that? Carolyn. Oh, yeah. Are you nervous to meet your, your uh, future black wife? Um, You're going to be a little nervous. It's okay. Is it nervous or just pent up energy <laughs> are both i i mean it's probably both the the thing about black women and here's the thing um i i remember when i was dating and i was like i i the thing of it was is i was always attracted to him so much it was like and when you got the attention from him and if you found one that was into you it's like it was such a great feeling that you feel like you won the lottery in, in a way. And, and and I tell people this. And ladies, look, if you give a white guy a compliment, he will embrace that more than a Becky that gives him that compliment. You know mm -hmm. why? And he might not be in the interracial dating, but he'll embrace it because it's coming from a black woman. And and in his mind, it'd be like even a black woman thinks I'm something, you know. Um, but there again, a lot of white men don't think you look at them that way. So you give them a compliment that 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 turns on a light bulb, and they're going to be like, "Oh wow, she likes me." Mm -hmm. I wonder what it'd be like to date her. You know that. A lot of times we don't date each other because we're not even thinking about it. It's not that we don't want to do it. We don't even just think about it because we're stuck in our, our community and where we live and the people that are around us. We're just used to the everyday things as usual thing. But I'm telling you, with white men and a black woman, black women, they got a unique beauty to them. Black women are different. It's something new. And when black women show you how they really are and their personality and the heart they have, it's like, gosh, you can't help but fall in love with a black woman. You can't. But a lot of times, us as white guys, we're not even a, around black women. We're not even thinking about that. But when we when it's when we see it, it's like it, I don't know, like something happens. I Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, it's well. You know, the young lady in the Marine Corps outfit, uh -huh. very beautiful, very lovely. Yeah. But, you know, I'm 51. Well, actually, this is my birthday month. I'll be uh -huh. 52. So to me, that's a she's she's beautiful, but to me, she's a kid. Well, yeah, yeah. For us, Corey, yeah, we're not going to approach her because she's too young for us. It, it would be My weird. My daughter's twenty six. It just kind of creeps me out to think about. It. <laughs> yeah, well, my daughter's twenty six too. My oldest, yeah. No, um, that's a, my middle kid. Yeah, but I, I mean, we're not going to go for her because we got we got morals, and we know she's way younger than us. And, and truth be told, she ain't going to really look our way anyway. But you know, I Brent, just... it would surprise you because I'm on three different dating sites and there are 20 year olds that try to. Uh, I'm just like, oh, well, well maybe I'm not, so, I'm not but... ready for it, is what it is. I'm not ready for it, it's unexpected, yeah. But the, the thing of it is, is um, what I've seen in her is just the attractiveness wasn't just how she looked because she was beautiful, but. The way she carried herself, how she wore her uniform, it was like, it was that professionalism that I could see. And I've always found that attractive with black women. A professional black woman is like, I, I mean, she don't have to be the best looking. I just fall in love with that. Maybe it's just my mindset, but it just, it, it's always been a turn on. It, it, it always has. 
Now, I don't want to these babies. professional women now that I'm married. But what I'm yeah. saying is when, when I was single, that was a real turn on for me. That was, to me, was awesome. That was beautiful. That was... Um, you we know, were in our 20s and the 90s when, you know, people were, they wore clothes. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't have your clothes on, that was the punk rocker, you know. But then again, back in that day, the punk rockers was kind of seen as the dreg of society. Uh-huh. So everything's really different now. Uh, happy birthday. Yeah, it's the 4th of July. Uh, not where you're at, Corey. You're still in the third. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I just spent the, the day with all my kids and my two grandkids bowling. Well, not the whole day, but a little bit. Oh, yeah, you went bowling? Yeah, my youngest, he's here from Fort Campbell, and he was, you know, dressed in his army. You know, oh, uniform. okay. He wasn't in the greens. He was in the brown. Oh, yeah, yeah, those uniforms are awesome. My yeah. son got those. Those are the old World War II style. They went back to that. Yeah. I, I was like, I told my son, I said, I wish I was still in because that uniform is so awesome. I'm glad he they went a, back to that. He had a lady stop him in uh-huh. the uh, at the uh, hotel. Uh-huh. And her and her daughter wanted a picture with him. Just random people. Yeah. It's it's just amazing. I mean, th- that's the town I live in. People just walk up to you and, you know. And so we're in there at the bowling alley and we're bowling and he's wearing his dress uniform, which is really cool. All the ladies are looking at him like, ooh, it's a man in uniform. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, oh, he's yeah. 25, you know, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's a kid to me, but he's not like young, young. He's not 18. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It, it, uh. You know, I, I remember coming from Iraq through Dallas. Um, I remember it, th- this was crazy. I, I was at Fort Carson, stationed at Fort Carson, right? I came back from Iraq. We went through Dallas. Um, people were wanting to take pictures of because I was in my uniform. And people were get. and when we came off the plane, people were giving us stuff, you know, snacks and all kinds of stuff. And people want to take pictures with you and tell you, thank you for your service. And, you know, I, I went in to buy lunch and somebody paid for it. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know, and I tried to, oh, no, that's okay. No, <laughs> your money's no good here. Boom. Yep. And then I flew from Dallas to Colorado. And, uh, you know, I uh, I got off the plane. And I was hungry, so I told my wife, I said, let's go, let's go eat, right? And we went to this restaurant and we and it was expensive, but I didn't care. I had plenty of money. I hadn't seen my wife. We're going to have a special night. It's going to be great. And we ordered all this food and stuff. And Corey, I didn't pay a dime for it. Yeah. There was some anonymous person that paid for everything. Yeah. And it, it was like, thank you for your service. And it was, um, it, it was amazing. It was, it was a beautiful thing. Um, you know, and I never wanted people to pay for my meal or nothing, but they did it because they appreciated, you know, you as a soldier. And, yeah. uh, you know, that was great. And I remember, you know, back in the, when they would talk about the Vietnam days and, you know, back then I was, a baby or a toddler when Vietnam was going on. But I heard the guys talking about that, how badly they were treated, how they were spit on and just, just treated like crap. And, you know, amazingly, you know, when my time, they treated us great, like heroes. I I mean, like they treated us very well. And, but that's, that's a good thing that, you know, in our country, we went from treating our soldiers of crap to treating them well. And, uh, but yeah, that, that was, uh, that was amazing. That, that really was. Um, well, you know, Hollywood declared war on the military. Back is that, is that, 
Oh yeah, the, well, the, was, the, the propaganda was tremendous. Yeah, and the politics behind it, and yeah, it was just. And you know, the soldier he don't have no choice; he's got to follow orders. So, you know, he he got treated like crap for follow doing his duty. And that was that wasn't right. That was. Yeah, you, I you grew know. up. We were we were chasing the daughters of all the vets. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think maybe that's why my wife's family accepted me so easy because I, you know, her family's a military family and I was a soldier, so it kind of fit in. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of vets here. My son, he went to men's breakfast before church started this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, nobody let him pay. They did, there's a nice restaurant down by the river by the home uh -huh. yeah it, it's got a good view and stuff but yeah it they didn't let him pay oh michael ray said hanoi jane yeah Ooh, hanoi jane I, I don't even want to go into that mm. yeah yeah she's famous for making that movie barbarella but yet everybody followed her and spitting on soldiers <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know what? Some of these men were sent to meet their maker because of what she did. Um, yeah, look at the suicide rate because of it. Yeah, it was it, it was just ugh. yeah, yeah. That that was a bad time. That was yeah, Carolyn. I can actually say that. Uh, well, because. Like you, Brent, I prayed for a wife, specifically a black wife. Yeah. And to me, the Lord told me not to date, that he's got this covered. And, you know, I mean, when you're focused on something and you think about it, first of all, I'm starting over. Well, in a sense, I can't say that I'm starting over like there was nothing to build on because I have that. But. Uh -huh. To me, one of the most important decisions you'll ever make in your life is the person you marry. Yes. It, it's like where you invest your money, what house you're going to build. It's even it's it's greater than the house you're going to build. Because that person's going to be with you at that house when you sell that house and go to another one. That's a big decision. It is. And, and you know. Bigger than most people give it credit. It, yeah, it is. It, it's a it's an investment. Totally. Um, yeah. you know, when it, here's my mindset with this and I can never, um, my, my wife is such a part of me. It's like, I, and I can never see being with it. God forbid, if anything happened, I wouldn't remarry. I wouldn't, I just don't, I, I could never see that. Cause my wife is like everything to me. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and, and when we would, when we would buy a house and uh, the house we live in, we bought about three years ago. So it's pretty new. We, we actually picked out the model and the, the lot where it was built and uh, you know, but when we would go get a house, I would, this was my job, Corey. I would figure out the budget. What can we afford? What do we want? What do we need? And the money aspect, right? Once mm -hmm. I figured that out, you know what I did? I tell my wife, okay, this is this is what we can get. This is our budget. Go find us a home. Mm -hmm. And she would go look for a house. And she would pick it out. And yeah. I didn't I didn't care. It, as long as she was happy. The only thing I had a concern was the yard. Do I have a nice size yard? Oh, if yeah. I have that, hey, you pick out the house and I'll pay for it. That just my mindset. Hey, and, Brent, uh, Carolyn, yeah. she, uh, she said, what are the benefits for marriage? I hear a lot of men say it's not important. Can I answer that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, Carolyn, when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, well, before Adam and Eve even got to the garden, he prepared the soil and put the fruit in the garden. It had to be good soil to produce good fruit. 
it, you know, I mean, if you look at it in a spiritual and a physical calm where, where it compresses together and becomes one, a woman, your wife is the good soil because the men bring the seed. And when the two come together, that's when the Holy Spirit shows up and makes a child. Not only that, but every good idea the man gets, he usually has the seed that he talks to his wife about. And then she will sit there in that good soil that she is, and she will chew that over. And then she will give back her best opinion. And in a lot of ways, a good strategy on how to carry it out, depending on her understanding of it. Because men don't, we can't see everything. Yeah. And so a good wife is also good soil. And a wife's role is by far greater than what we see in divorce court. And God forbid anybody's looking at Hollywood as an example. I mean, just vomit right now. But, oh, yeah. You know, and, and the other thing is, there's a reason why you're not supposed to have sex before a marriage. Because the enemy will bring condemnation on your head so bad for not following God and abstaining from it. He's trying to get you messed up and unfocused so you'll screw up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there, there are so many benefits in marriage. And the men that say that it's not important are fools. Um, because how do you build a family without a marriage? First um, of all, how can you claim you have a marriage without God? Yeah. I mean, you got a contract. But whatever. But that, that's God's plan. The man, the woman, and children. That's the family. And it, marriage is very important. Um. You know, the the woman, like the Bible says, is a treasure. You know, she's worth her weight in gold. If you have a, you find a wife, you find a good thing in favor from the Lord. Um, you know, I, I can't, I can't see being with multiple women. That don't even make sense. I, I mean, the structure of the family is the man and woman being together as one. When you're one, there's nobody else involved. It's just you're one. You're two individuals that come together as one. And mm -hmm. it is a contract. And it, it's a promise to your spouse and to God. And when you break that promise, not only are you cheating on your wife or husband, but you're cheating on God, your children, your family. It, it, it destroys so much. And, you know, some marriages don't work. I, you know, I get it. But we got to have the mindset that, you know, we go into it to make it work. And, and, you know, without my wife, I wouldn't have nothing. I mean, I wouldn't be half of what I've become. And, and I'm not bragging or nothing. What I'm saying is I'm more successful with having my wife than I would not having her because she yeah, has yeah. so much of an impact on my life. Yeah. And, and it, it, and we complement each other and we're, we're so much stronger together than if we weren't. Well, cause um, her eyes, she's focused on the Lord. You're focused on the Lord and that soil together is conducive of life and abundance. It, it, the person you marry is so important. Their yeah. heart, their motive, their belief, all of that stuff. And I'm not saying that, you know, somebody that uh, you don't have to be a Christian to enjoy these benefits, but you do have to carry out the qualifications of it because there are people. I mean, I said before, you know, can you say you're married and not be a Christian? Well, yes, you can. If you follow those universal laws that God put in place where you commit to each other and you don't break or deviate from that. He will honor that because that's what he said he would do anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's just a fact, but you know, where two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst. Look what happens when you get with the right spouse. Every day God is in your presence. 
you're in his presence and you're never out of it that's where the blessings are yeah yeah and, and when you got that when you hit tough times you get through it together you you embrace each other you depend on each other you know you lift each other up hmm. it's it's like when it says you're one you really are hmm. and, and, and it's so funny that me and my wife think so much alike it's like we'll say things that the other person's thinking it, it's weird it's like we're like on the same brain or something or well you know they say that you finally finish each other's sentences me and my wife do that all the time mm -hmm. like i won't say the same word at the same time like wow how did you were thinking what I was. And maybe it's just we've gotten so used to each other, we think a lot alike. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, when Carolyn asked, what are the benefits of getting married? <laughs> Living the best life. The best life you don't buy. You can't get it by buying a pair of shoes or traveling to Dubai. The best life is having the best spouse standing next to you. That's the best life. Because yeah. all this other stuff is just material. You're going to use it. It's going to get old. You're going to discard it. But the best mm -hmm. spouse standing next to you will never be an option to discard. That's the best life. Regardless of what you do, where you go, what you see. Yep. That people are just so, they want designer marriages now. Like a designer handbag. Like a, like a yeah. you know, some kind of a TikTok clout chase and I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, like like the perfect marriage is the two people are so attractive, stunningly good looking and <laughs> plenty of money and just, um, you yeah. know, eat the best food, live in the best houses, just, and we, we live in reality. You know what? Yeah, that's all make-believe. Yeah, truth be told, most of us are average at best. That's that's the majority. Well, even uh, King Solomon said that lifestyle was all vanity. Yeah. And truth be told, uh, most of us are middle class, so we got to work for a living. Um, you know, most of us are not popular or famous. Most of us are just everyday people. But you know what? We can be blessed and live our best life and, you know, be with the Lord and be blessed. Um, you know, and, and a lot of times we're more happy than the famous, uh, successful, attractive people out there. Most <laughs> of the people are miserable because they live in their vanity. They, well, they're clout chasing. I mean, one yeah. negative response or one negative, uh, what do you call those crit critic or, you know, and it, it shakes them because they're, they're shallow people. Yeah, they're so used to people telling them they love them and they're great. And when somebody don't, they lose their mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, when you when Carolyn asked if I was uh, nervous about meeting her, yes, I, I guess I could say I am nervous because of, she's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's perfect for me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess that, that qualifies. I'm nervous, excited, you know. Um, anxious. I know I'm not supposed to be, but okay, whatever. I'm, you know, <laughs> you're not supposed. To, of course, you're gonna be anxious. Well, you're yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that was a good. I like the way you put those different people up there. Oh, only the one, three brats. <laughs> only one thing though. Huh? You, you needed a couple of women that were a little bit older. You know, for this yeah. gray face that I got. <laughs> the gray face, what are you talking about? My gray whiskers. Oh, well, I got <laughs> some gray. You look at my, actually, my hair is more grayer than it looks. Um, you know, I'll put gel into it to where it makes it look dark, but it's, it's mostly gray. I think... Well, actually, Corey, it's not gray. It's my blonde coming in, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I got I got a mix of blonde and gray, so it is probably going to yeah. go pretty well white here pretty soon. 
<laughs> you know what's funny is when I was little, my hair was blonde, blonde, right? Almost like oh, white. Yeah. And uh, as I got older, my hair got darker. And, and it went from blonde to like a dishwater blonde to brown and then went to black and then started going to gray. So it's like I'm going through the cycle. You know? <laughs> it's weird. My hair never did. My hair darkened up a little bit when I moved back to Alaska because the sun wasn't up there. Oh, it wasn't bleaching it? Yeah. But as soon as I came back down, it just went white right up. Just, I mean, white, white. You know what, though? In the summer, my hair will get lighter. And I think it's just the sun bleaching it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now it's just turning white. It's, uh, you yeah. know. You're a grandpa. <laughs> huh? You're a grandpa. I am a grandpa. Yeah. I'm a. You know what? I was thinking of another name. You know how I came up with Captain Swirl? I was thinking uh, the grandpa of investment. <laughs> <laughs> It was pretty cool to hit the bowling alley when them two little kids, the grandkids. I mean, I, I got hugs at a dead run. Just kneel down and, you know, brace for it. Just got hit by both of them. <laughs> a group hug. Yeah, grandkids are amazing. It, it's, you know, it's a, uh, yeah. It, it was funny because I was at work and, uh, you know, my boss, he, he, he's older than I am. He's like, uh, I think he's like in the 70s. Um, but uh, maybe his late 60s. I don't know. But he was having his first grandchild, and he's excited. And, mm -hmm. and he looked at me and says, you know, I'm having my, I got a grandchild now. And he says, uh, you know, one day you'll have a grandchild. I said, I already got two. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty wild. But it was, well, it, it's, I don't, it, it's kind of weird. It's like, you know, my first daughter, I was 26. So um, I wasn't real young, but uh, my oldest daughter, she got married at 20. Mm. And, uh, you know, they had a child right away, her and my son-in-law. And he's 22. He was 22. They're both young. And I was like, and I was like, I was trying to talk him out. I said, well, you know, uh, why don't you wait? Because my daughter was still doing her college. And I thought, wow, she gets married. She ain't going to finish. And, you know, she was, you know, she was at the University of New Mexico. She was on the dean's list. And then, well, then she was going to New Mexico State. And then uh, she had her, she had her associate. She's almost had her bachelor's. And then. They want to get married. And I'm like, oh, man, what? can you wait? Be patient. <laughs> Be patient. No, they want to get married. But you know what? They're adults. So, yep. and, and my daughter's like, Dad, I'll, I'm still going to get my degree. I says, okay, well, it, it's hard, easier said than done when you're married. You know, you're living at home and, you know, all you got to worry about is school. But amazing. She got married. Had a daughter, and uh, you know she she finished her college, mm -hmm. got her master's degree while married, while being a a wife and a mom. So I'm I'm impressed. I was like, wow. But well, uh, she takes after her parents. Well, I wouldn't say that because we're not <laughs> educated, but um, we all have college. But what mm. I'm saying is, you know, that was. She shows some character, and I, I give her, I give my wife credit because I'm telling you, and there have been studies on this when it comes to interracial, and I don't want to seem biased, I don't, but no, it, be biased, it's okay. Yeah, but it, it just seems that black women, white men, that their marriages are better than our counterpart, right, and that our kids do better. And, and somebody tell me if I'm wrong, because I was thinking, nah. I see my situation and with my brother-in-law and his kids, yeah, our kids are more successful. So I thought, well, that's just, you know, that's just how it is with our situation. But I've seen it in other people's situations. And I'm like, and I don't want to say it, but it's actually true. But then it sounds biased when I say it. 
Well, Brent, it, it's okay to be biased. I mean, if you look yeah. at the facts, if you look at the statistics that are printed out, you can't say that the, that the facts and statistics are being biased when they're just printing the truth. Yeah, it, 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 stating it is not being biased. And, and you know what I embrace? This is what really I, I remember when I got married, people there were people that tried to talk me out of it. There were people that said it would fail. They were saying I just embrace it when they see me today and I'm still married. And a lot of these naysayers have been in divorces, you know, failed marriages and relationships. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if they can't tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. And the amazing thing is, is people tell me, how can you say black women are the best choice? I have people try it, try to argue that point. <laughs> or how can you say your combination is the best? Well, look at the stats. Yeah. Well, and I say, look at my life, how long I've been married. I tell me I'm wrong. Tell me my marriage ain't the best. Tell me mm -hmm. black women ain't the best. And I'll turn around and call you a liar because I got proof. There's statistics yeah. that back up what I'm saying. My own life backs it up. In my family, I got the most successful marriage. And yeah. I chose a black woman. Yeah, they thought I was crazy back then. But you know what? Mm -hmm. No, I was right and you were wrong. Mm -hmm. And I well, you, you yes. take the you take the marriage statistic and they show the white woman and the white man. And, you know, you could be Latino, uh, Asian, because they just bring in Caucasian. Mm -hmm. And you they show you the statistic, the marriage rate, the success of that couple. Uh -huh. And then you add the black woman and the white man. And they're 44% better than the norm. Now you yeah. gotta fight. You gotta fight for that. But look what it's so much. Look, it's so worth fighting for. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. gotta be a strong person to even to even go into it because everybody that's up there where the normal is are all gonna be against you. And you know, really, for two people that have the mindset that we're gonna make this work, are more committed than any of those other people. Yep. And that that has an impact on our success because you know what. We're the most attacked. And I say that black women, white men combination is the most hated. And, oh, yeah. and somebody yeah. tell me I'm wrong in today's world. Because who, who is be, being called the fetishizer, the racist, all this stuff. And oh, then yeah. with women, who's being called the bad witch, the sellout, all that, all the negative stuff, right? And you would think that we would be the least successful because of all the crap we got to deal with. But yet we're mm -hmm. the most successful, and, mm -hmm. and it's we got to put the fight in. We gotta, we gotta stand. We gotta make it work. And when we get to the point, when we get to marriage, we've already fought for our relationship even before we started dating. Really, if you think about it, yeah, because you already have that independent mindset that what they said did not mean nothing. They yeah. weren't going to change your mind. Yeah. And Fancy Nancy says she doesn't understand. Huh? Fancy Nancy. She said she doesn't understand. You don't understand? Maybe we were going too fast. I, she's, I got a, she's got a cute avatar, by the way. I just want to point that out. <laughs> well, the, the thing of it is, is I'm seeing success. And, and uh, the thing of it is, it is in my own life. I see success. I, I've been married over 28 years. It, and there's been so many people against it that mm -hmm. said it wouldn't work. And, and I know people in the same situation as me that have successful marriages. It's not just my marriage. It's all around. And, and the thing of it is, is when you have to fight for something, you appreciate it more. And it's not saying we're better people than our, the mm -hmm. other combination. No, we're not. But we go about it a different way and we're getting success. You know, she, she clarified. Oh, she, okay. She said, so, I don't understand why, it, why it is so hated. Yeah. I, I don't either. I mean, I, I well, mean, I'll, I'll tell you flat out because the white man and the black woman are the most race loyal. 
Yeah, they are. And when and they decide to go well, against the establishment, they really get hated. Yeah. Maybe I mean, that's what it is. Cause, and that comes from are. your own mom, your own grandma, your own sister. I mean, it's, it's you know, it comes from everywhere. Yeah. But for the one who's decided, they ain't gonna, it won't matter what they say. Yeah, and, and the thing of it is, is ladies, and I would say to black women, if you got a white guy that's really interested in you and trying to talk to you, um, get to know him and see what he's about because, you know, a lot of times he's already, you know, given the finger to his his family, his community, and everything else for you. He's pushed everything aside and put you first. Hmm. That's called you know, cleaving you under your wife. Huh? <laughs> That's called cleaving under your wife the way the Bible said it. Yeah, but I mean, when we're serious about dating, we've already thrown that to the side. We already put you first. Yeah. Um, and I'm not talking about the white guy that just wants the experience because, you know, he's just looking. But I'm talking the one that wants yeah. the relationship, the one that brings you home to meet the family. That's the guy I'm talking about. Because he's already told him, look, this is what I'm doing. This is my life. And you know what? He don't care what his community thinks. And he really don't care what the ladies' community thinks if she's with him all the way. All he cares about is he loves her and wants her to be his wife. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's another thing that makes us stronger because we have to stand up for each other. And if we don't, it's going to fail. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, and, and uh, the, a lot of the marriages and relationships that don't work are usually weeded out before it gets serious because, um, you know, they can't take that pressure or they can't, they're worried about what people think or what their family says or friends say. Those yeah, people get weeded out. But those of us that, disingenuous. those of us that, are seriously in we're going all the way and nobody's stopping us and mm -hmm. and i'm telling you this is this is my prediction i think in the future the near future the biggest income earners and i think they already are is black women white men and it's going to be more obvious as real time catches up to the here and now that there are going to be some haters that say it, it's because of white supremacy that we're so successful. And it's not that. It's because you got two people coming together as a power couple. And two people that are pushing everything aside for each other. And we're going to be the most successful. And we already are. And it, it's just going to be more obvious as time goes by. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be because we have more privilege. People will say that, but no, it's because we put in the work more than anybody else. It's because we go the distance where everybody else don't. It's because we're more strategic where everybody else isn't. Mm -hmm. It's harder for us to get together, but when we do it, we do it right. We really do. Yeah, that's another thing about having sex before marriage. I don't want anybody to look at her, my future wife, and say, you're just a bed witch. He's just using you. Yeah. You know, you're just, he's just playing. He's experimenting. He's fetishizing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the boy hasn't even touched me. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you you know what's amazing? Is you remember that that comedian Godfrey, the comedian or whatever that guy's name oh, is? That, yeah, that guy was unhinged. Yeah, he flipped out about that advertisement sign or whatever. He was talking about um this this white guy married to a black woman. I, I think he was part of some group or something. And he says, Yeah, and, and he sits there and he fetishizes her and he was going in on white men fetishizing black women, all upset about it, right? But then he turned around in another video and said that his preference was black women, but he would sleep with white women. 
So, so he's fetishizing. Yeah, exactly. But it's not fetishizing because <laughs> he's doing it. I, I was just like, you're a hypocrite. You're well, he's <laughs> worse than that. He's worse than that. He's literally trying to make everybody feel guilty, and he has no guilt at all. Yeah, but I, I mean, I've not just. Ooh. I I've seen dudes that are 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 promiscuous with different women, and then complain about the white man fetishizing a black woman. I, I'm just like, really? You're 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 fetishizing, but you're complaining about another group doing it. Well, and you know what's part, ironic? They'll they, actually they'll sit there and they'll complain because the women that are out there running, you know, the single life only uh, want the top 20% of men. So they're not only, I mean, you think about their mentality. They complain that the white guy has a black woman. They complain that the black women only want the top 20%. I mean, so what's the common denominator here? You got a loser talking about his lack of whatever. It isn't going to, the guy's never going to be happy. What, well, the thing of it is, is I find this this weird, too. Um, I, I've heard these men going on women that are with white guys, right? Hmm. But the, then there's a black man that's that's out there taking care of his wife. You, you get like a Wus Russell Wilson, right? That marries, yeah. marries Sierra and accepts her son, and he's somehow weak. And I, I mean, they, they're like talking like he's just garbage where, where that guy future is like a hero i'm just like what is going on i i mean aren't we as men supposed to marry the women we love and if they have a child that comes with the deal that's that's a package deal it, it was like when my stepmother married my father i was part of the deal because that's my father right mm -hmm. and same thing with Guys that marry women, if she has a child or children, that's your family now. You're yeah. married. That's the way it is. And, yeah. and a lot of these guys don't want women with children. Well, newsflash, there's a lot of women that don't want to get with guys that have children because they don't want to deal with the, the the baby mama drama or whatever that you you call it. Yeah, and they don't instant want, work, instant drama. Yeah, and, and they don't want the man's resources go into different women that have his children. So, I, I mean, it goes both ways. And, and, and if you don't want to be with a woman because she's got a child, that's your choice. You could do that. But there are women that don't want to be with dudes that have multiple children. I'm telling you. Or some women want a guy that don't have children, just like some of these guys. Um, you know, but for someone that has children that, for a guy that has children with different women that don't want a woman that has children, that's that's a hypocrite too. It's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's just silliness. But you know, you know in, the, in this day and age we live in, though, there are so many people that are in their 40s and 50s that don't have kids. Yeah. They went to, they went to college. They got into their career. And when they finally got comfortable, then they wanted the family. And yeah. there's a lot of them. Oh, yeah, there is. Hmm. Yeah. It's but kind of surprising. I, I, I see 45-year-old women that want kids on a dating site. Not that women can't have them. But usually they want a man that's their age or older. I mean, so you add 25 years to that age, that's 70 when the kid's 25. Yeah. Oof. I don't know if I got that kind of energy. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. my. Yeah. It, it's like, I mean, it took a lot of energy when, you know, me and my wife had our, our children. I mean, I mm. when my daughter was born, I was 26. My wife was 27, our first child. Mm. And uh, I was 23. <laughs> 23. You started you started young. Hell yeah. Well, my dad was 19 and my mom was 17. They started real young. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> they were my dad had to marry my mom because of me, and yeah. 
Well, he didn't have to, but he did. Um, yeah, but, I never had any kids out of wedlock. It's just amazing. But yeah, you know, it was pretty, have, pretty, uh, pretty reckless when I was young, younger, I guess you could say. Well, that's the society we live in. You know, we're taught that. You know, what do we see in movies? People that are dating are having sexual relations. Mm-hmm. That's that's part of life. That you just do it. Is it right? Mm-hmm. No, it's not. If you look, and there's a reason why. It's not that people. You you know, it's not that you're not supposed to have sex, but you're you're supposed to have it within marriage because it's so much better because there's a safety net. If you have children, you love each other. You're in a marriage. You're supposed mm-hmm. to, you know, um, and you only have sexual sex with the person you're married with. So you know what? You're not spreading diseases. That's another benefit. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's, it, it's not based on lust. It, you have love for each other. Uh, Caroline Dreams wants me to drop the link. I think Indiana Mom wants to come up. Oh, oh, she's staying for Indiana Mom? Okay. Well, whoever wants to come up, please, link, please. Link, please. Okay. Yeah, you could say uh, I'd be, well, excited, anxious. Yeah. I mean, it's been almost three years since I was uh, in a relationship. It's coming pretty fast. I, I tell you what, though, when, when you first meet, um, when you date, it, it's like it's exciting, and it's like I, I I just remember when you know I was dating. I remember when I dated my wife, and it was like, see, people don't experience dating like we did, Corey, the old school, where you had to approach. You yeah, had to you talk meet them face to them. face. It was face to face. And you know what? (laughs) Either she's going to make you happy or hurt your feelings. I'm just going to say that. And rejection was right in your face. And she said, nope, I'm not interested. Bam. You know that. (laughs) I've seen this one one, uh, attractive black woman. And she was Mm -hmm. in the Costco. And she was walking with her friend. And... You know, I mean, if I was just looking for a date date, when we made eye contact, it was it was there, but it was uh-huh. it wasn't I knew that this wasn't gonna be, you know, it was either not her or just the the wrong time. Uh-huh. And, uh, but it would have been really easy. <laughs> He's a lovely lady, really lovely woman. You should have talked to her according to her hey. Well, at the, moment, at, the, at the time, I don't think I was in the proper mindset, you know? Uh-huh. You know, because, I mean, a 30-year relationship, it's not something you just stop doing one day. I mean, you got to you gotta let go of everything, you know, for men, because men always think about, you know, what they're responsible for. When you yeah. do something like that, I mean, you're responsible for this, you're responsible. You know how long it takes to get that mentality out of your head? That's a long time. Yeah. It doesn't happen in a month or two. It's something you gotta you gotta force yourself to let go because you're not involved anymore. And so you know, when you're still thinking like that, I wasn't in the proper mindset to even be in a relationship yet. Yeah. But you know what? Approach. Think about what you're going to say when it happens again. <laughs> well, I'm I'm in a different mindset now. Yeah. <laughs> It's totally different. And, uh, you know, I mean, three years to me, um, I have no trouble at all approaching people. Oh, that's I good. Don't. I don't. But, you know, I'm I'm really fast to see if there's a wedding ring or if there's a man close by that's following, you know, like they're together. Well, yeah, and, don't approach her if there's a man. Yeah, I don't want no awkward... What are you? You know, <laughs> it's like nope. Now, now if she's with their friends and they're all women, approach. Yeah, oh yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was rubbernecking too when I seen her in Costco. She was looking around, you know. And when I seen her, let's just say everything looked right, you know. I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to be all thirsty on the show. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I'll leave that for the chat. A lot of times it is right, and a lot of times we miss that opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Indiana Mom, good to see you. Welcome. Hello, Indiana Mom. Oh, she's got to try again. She's having oh, okay. a struggle streaming. Oh, is it? Must be. Okay. Yeah, try again. I don't know. I think you were echoing, but then... Yeah, we're getting know. feedback. Yeah, th this internet is... I, I got to have... They're supposed to come in Tuesday and fix this. I, I don't know if my modems... Um, well, there's a lot of traffic out here right now. It's a holiday weekend. Well, yeah, but I mean, my internet's stronger than this. It's just... Hmm. Well, we have a lot of construction going on, a lot of houses going up where I live, and it's just like, you know, our internet was down for a little bit, and then they've been working on it and stuff, and mm. oh, she's going to try on her laptop instead? Okay, yeah, maybe that'll work better. Yeah, sometimes yeah, the was, phone just don't have enough oomph. Yeah, and she's getting a double feed, it sounded like, because I could... Hear you echoing through her. Yeah, I heard the back chatter. Yeah. I always come in on my desktop. Yeah, it's, I always, well, well, I got a laptop. I, uh, that usually goes pretty well. Yeah, well um, I, run the, I run an iPad, but I also run the, the desktop too because it's just, I, I can do both. Oh, okay. Here she comes. The desktop. Hey, Indiana mom. Hey, is that better? Yeah, yeah, that's much better. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. Hey, uh, did you get your wrench? I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I, I wasn't I wasn't even really concerned about that at all, but you know, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't I didn't take it away. I don't know what happened. Oh, that's um, all right. And and I would say if Guys, if I give you a wrench and it disappeared somehow, and it might have been um because I I had a troll come in and I accidentally I think I accidentally blocked you and then I latched you back up because you know how the chat scrolls down. I went to block them and I think you yeah. came up. And yeah. I probably took away the wrench. That makes but, sense. That but makes sense. I didn't I didn't want to take it away from you, so no, I just but, but I, I, I so sent an email and I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I have to say, Brent, you are looking fabulous tonight. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> don't, don't build my head too big. I'm Those <laughs> colors are working for you, sir. Oh, my, my wife picked this out. Of she, course uh, they did. Yeah. Of course she did. <laughs> Yeah, she picked out the white the white jacket and blue shirt and my suit. Kudos and, uh, to Sandy. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's like, yeah, we're gonna go shopping. We need to get you some more clothes. I'm like, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have nothing negative to say at all, sir. Miss Sandy has got it going on. Yeah. She knows, she knows. She knows. Yeah, I'll, I'll listen to her because black women know how to <laughs> you know about fashion. They know how to dress. So. Yes, we I'm do. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, sir. But I, I wanted to come up because lately um, I've been uh, hearing multiple lives in, in multiple um, black women confused about where do we meet these guys where where do we find these guys where are they you know and and i'm just like i i'm actually confused because i'm like dude they're they're everywhere yeah i don't i don't know what they're not seeing if they're in the wrong neighborhood or 
if they're in the right neighborhood and not paying attention or I don't, I don't understand. And, and I just want to say, dude, put yourself, you know, to the women, to the women, you know, put yourself in spaces where you know your type is going to be and, and and also don't don't put yourself in spaces that you don't enjoy you know what i mean yeah so like i know I'm, like like my type is is the white guy uh-huh. and i'm a skater i'm a rocker chick Okay, so 30 years ago, I put myself in spaces like the roller skating rink, concerts, you know, live live band performances, so on and so forth. I put myself in that space. I never put myself in a bowling alley because I hate bowling. So if I were to meet a dude in a bowling alley, <laughs> even if he's my type, and and he looks good on paper and we match on paper if he loves bowling we're gonna have a problem because he's gonna want to go bowling all the time and i hate bowling <laughs> yeah well, that's not entirely true i yeah. like bowling but i suck at it i that, only go well, like i suck more. at it too <laughs> that's why yeah. i don't like it i suck at it too the only way that i'm good at bowling is if you put the little bumper guards up for like the four-year-olds then I can bowl. <laughs> yeah. That's you, not you, funny, Dave. Why are you laughing at me? Because <laughs> I can. <laughs> look, look, if getting gutter balls was a thing in bowling, I'd be a professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. I, I think we could compete for who could throw the most gutters. <laughs> yeah. I'm not good at bowling either. Me either. Oh my God. Anything I'll do it. it. That, that like you have to aim at like bowling pool darts mm, yeah that's it's not it's a no for me no Mm-mm. yeah no. And, and like how those people go on bowling and spin the ball and it like curves yeah i like, can't i can't okay. do that why do you do that stuff i just throw yeah. it and go yeah i put it straight down the line <laughs> i'm I, i'm good i'm good with just getting the ball down the alley without slipping and busting my butt. Yeah. You know what? Really? It's bad when- oh, on camera. <laughs> on camera. Whatever. Yes. You, you know, you know what's bad is when your bowling scores like a football score. <laughs> like- no, you know, what's bad is when your six year old beats you at bowling. Out bowls you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're not letting him win. Mm-hmm. And he's using bumpers, and so are you. Oh, no. No, no. There were no bumpers. <laughs> I use the no, bumpers. No. <laughs> no, the 24-year-old that I have, when he was, when he, actually, I think he was five. Yeah, he was five. And it was my dad's last Father's Day before he passed. And we went all out. We got T-shirts. Uh, Papa's fishing buddy and um, sexiest grandpa and and daddy's girl and I mean <laughs> we went all out and we went we went bowling and um, his dad uh, we we did the the kid there was like our the bowling alley in our area had like a if you have a dad that you come bowling with on Father's Day your game is free. So, oh, nice. yeah, so, so CJ and his dad bowled for free and me and my dad bowled for free and it, we, we had a ball, we had a ball, but the highest score was the five-year-old. <laughs> there were no bumpers and I was like, I can't, I can't believe my, my, my kindergartner is, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know how to process this, but okay. Yeah, yeah, go like CJ. A, you know? It was like 140 something today, but I played five games, but the rest of them I struggled to get it up to 100 again. <laughs> Dude, 
It was horrible. It was horrible. And then we took my dad to um, to see the movie um, Ice Age. And the, the, whole theater, the whole theater was full of little kids and their parents and mm. and my my old my old man who is it was a lot like me really silly outgoing you know and my dad had this like contagious laugh mm. so when things would happen in the movie my dad would just howl and and i realized that people in the theater were laughing because of him they were feeding off it he had that theater roll we were dying all of us we were cracked we were dying it was hilarious and then at the end we took him to a steakhouse and he had a big old steak and a baked potato and a big old beer and that was in that was the best father he said that was the best father say he ever had and it was because um two years earlier he had been diagnosed with cancer and he was on chemo and so on and so forth and we lost him you know uh a few months later but that that was an awesome father's day but i'm telling you my son at, at five years old kicked everybody's butt it it at bowling and i was like oh, i don't know i don't know what to think about this because yeah i don't well I, there was only one thing like losing. i'm very competitive i don't like losing so losing to a five-year-old is not a good thing for my ego. <laughs> that, that just means you suck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's okay if you suck at something. It's, you don't have to be good at everything. But, yeah. you know, like I said, with women, we need to start, stop waiting for just random guys to come up and say hello. Because they don't always mm. do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot, oh, especially um, men that are not black, they have, sometimes they're a little bit worried because black women are so race loyal that yeah. y'all never know, you know? Well, so for they men, they, they, we only approach one in 30 women that we're attracted to. Exactly. So I understand. So that means women... Black women need to start putting themselves in spaces where their preferences are instead of yeah. just waiting for some random other guy to, to approach them because that's that's very rare. Yeah. I, I want to say something on that, too. And, and you're right. Um, a lot of white guys, we do believe that black women just ain't interested in us. Right. And I've talked to white men. They said, well... I said, well, my wife's black. Yeah, but, you know, you're an exception. No, I'm not. No. It's it, it just I approached, and you're not. That's all it is. Right. It, it, but a lot of men think that, and we're so afraid we're going to offend you because right. we have that stereotype that, you know, we're afraid you're going to think we're racist. We're afraid you're going to think we're a fetishizer. Right. We just, you, you know, so we kind of hesitate, you might say. Um and you that's know, not true. We, we it, those but, of us that those of us that have crossed the line, we understand that's not true. Yeah, it's not, it's not when it's a fetish thing. It's very, very obvious. Yeah, and it don't. Yeah, it's. But yeah, I, I mean, there, there's that barrier there, and it's because, and. And I tell white guys, if you like a black woman, tell her. Just tell her. Don't even yes. think about it. Just walk up to her. Let her know your intentions. And she'll think highly, more highly of you than if you just look at her. Oh, if you look definitely. at her, she thinks you're a weirdo. And she thinks you're fetishizing her in your head. When you might just be looking at her and say, wow, she's beautiful. She looks Most nice. definitely. And all you need to do is, is you don't... Know, you know, just staring at her, you're right. Just staring is like, it's creepy. It's yeah, like, you feel oh, awkward. Oh my God. 
Why is he keep looking at me? And or, we, we start thinking, do I have a booger? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, did did I miss did I miss like some of the dried up drool on my cheek from when I fell asleep on the couch and now I have well, you know they've on said they said face. That you know what's going on? Why is he a, staring at me like that? You a know, two second stare is yeah, interesting. Uh, but a three second stare starts to border on creepy. Yeah. It shows genuine interest, but if you go to five seconds, it's almost too long. No. Oh, yeah. The five seconds hey. is like, do I need to call the police? <laughs> well, the Are you gonna thing call is me it, home? If, What's going on? If you think the guy is if you think the guy is cute, you've only got two seconds to respond to him. Yeah. yeah. Are you prepared? to uh, reciprocate his interest? It depends on the setting. It depends on where we're at, who we're around, and, and, and just the setting in general. It also depends yeah. on um, like how we're dressed, how mm. we, we feel about ourselves, our own self-esteem. It, it mm -hmm. depends on um, yeah, see, there you go, being a woman, getting all in your emotions. Well, yeah, that's who we are. That's who we are, dude. Hundred percent. Hey, tell me if this is true, but I, I think okay. some black women will turn down white guys, not because they want to turn them down, but they just feel weird or feel awkward, so they might just shoot them down because they they don't know what to do. Is that true? I, I mean, have a cousin. I'm not sure about that, mm -hmm. but okay. My family is weird. Mm -hmm. Y'all know. Well, I don't. I don't even know if I. I told y'all this. Um, my grandmother was so mentally and emotionally abused by my grandfather that she encouraged her granddaughters to date out. No. Okay. She encouraged us to date out when when we were like preteens like 11 12 13 yeah she 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 made it very clear she did not want us to settle with black men you you know what i i've dated some women that their moms told them to date out to get a white guy yeah that, that came from black family yeah i i've i've seen that yeah my grandmother said i don't care if he's asian hispanic caucasian it doesn't matter as long as it's not a black guy, because they do not treat you right. Hmm. She made it very, very clear. Um, and and us girls, we we weren't actually physically attracted to black guys, even when we were teenagers in the eighties. Um, so it really wasn't a problem. But me, my older sister, and three of my cousins all married out, hmm. and out of and and those are the the cousins that I have. The, those are the girls from my maternal grandmother. We're the only granddaughters she has. She has five granddaughters. Mm. Um, my paternal grandmother has like sixty granddaughters. I don't know. My dad was kind of a man whore, whatever. But um, <laughs> my mom <laughs> had two so. of us. Right. My mom had two of us. <laughs> my 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 maternal aunt had three and so that's where the five girls come from um and um between the five of us we have eight daughters and all of them have dated or married out all of them and um we are the only ones that have maintained a marriage in our family more than 10 years it's is Indiana do do a lot of people date out over there and marry out? I I know it's increasing across the board everywhere, but I mean, is it or is it just depending on where you're at? I guess I, I see it more. Uh -huh. um, it's it's progressing very slowly here, but I I do I do see it more. Um, I'd say right now because like I, I live in a little little bitty small town in the middle no. of nowhere. <laughs> yeah that would be slower yeah um 
but in the in the in the city areas like um chicago indy even even south bend uh fort wayne um i see it more mm -hmm. than than i ever have um now every interracial couple that i see it's almost like 50 50 now yeah which is really weird for me you know what in the 80s when i had my first little boyfriend in high school it was like i was the only black chick with a white guy in the whole freaking state <laughs> it was just me just, you know, just me nobody else <laughs> me you, and my older sister that's it and it was you, like is our family weird what's going on here <laughs> you know what hey, when i was when i when i was dating i was like the only guy that and people thought i was weird like why Yep. What's with the black women? I mean, yep. you don't like white women. That was the thing I always heard. Um, yep. You know, my friends, you don't like white women. Well, how about Hispanic women? Why black women? What? What is it? What? Like they were confused. Like, what are you doing? Yep. And and, and it turned from what are you doing to a, how do I do what you're doing? <laughs> it was kind of like that through the years. Well, you know. Um, for me, honestly, I remember, um, like, in my early 20s, mm -hmm. when Tree and I first started uh, dating, and um, we went to Indiana, Indiana University, uh -huh. and um, we would hang out, and freshman year, there wasn't really a lot to do because you had to be 21 to get into like the clubs and bars and stuff. Uh -huh. um, but by the time we both hit 21 and we were juniors, we had been dating for about a year and a half. So we were like a tight couple. I mean, that was my man. I was his girl, period. And we would go to like some of the local clubs, you know, and white guys would look at him like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, I see you. Yeah. Um, black women would almost like be kind of, mm, they would give me the looks like, oh, you're with him? When when there was like five of them at the next table. But if I were to run into one of them individually in the ladies' room, it was a different story. It was, mm. is that your boyfriend? Um, yeah. How do you talk to white guys? And I'd be like, well, if they speak English, you just say hey. <laughs> you just talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that difficult. You the, wake up and you say hello. It, I it, like your shirt. Hello. You have really gorgeous hair. I mean, it's not that. What do you mean? How do you? They don't speak a different. What? You, you you know what that that's funny because uh, I I've had I've had. I mean, as it, it, an individual, they would ask me for advice in private, yeah. but as a group, they would hate on me. I I think because that that's you know what I think's going on there. I I think that they feel like they gotta hate on you in the group, but individuals like you know they're kind kind of curious. Yes. Uh, and maybe it's like a psychological thing. Yes. They probably don't. They're probably not hating on you. They're just probably like. Oh, well, no, okay. it, it's because it's because black women are conditioned to be so race loyal mm. that when we're in a group. And well, I can't even I can't include myself in we. But when black women are in a group and they see other men that they might be attracted to, they feel like they will be ridiculed and and shunned 
for uh, looking at and, and considering other men, which is a pile of crap because yeah. they should consider their own happiness. Who are you attracted to? Who do you want to spend time with? Who do yeah. you want to, to, to be around? It shouldn't be a collective, but black women is a collective are so race loyal. It, it's, it's literally killing us. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, are totally opposite of that. They'll take the woman that they're attracted to, regardless of ethnic background. Yep. If she's attractive, available, free, um, and willing, they're, it's like, Okay, let's do this. Men, for the most part, I mean, you get some guys that'll actually speak against, you know, well, why are you with her? But usually when yeah. you get older, that's that really fades away. Yeah. And you just look at them, it's like, well, just mind your own damn business. It ain't, you know, it's none of your business at all. Right. And yeah. Just keep moving on. It, you, but, know, you know, yeah. for a lot of people, it's just, I don't know. I think it, age has a lot to do with it. Yes. I, I think so. Because when I was, has a lot. yeah, because when I was younger, they'd ask, "What are you doing? Why are you? Why do you?" Like they were confused. And as I get older, it well, as time, you know, they got used to. Sooner or later, friends, okay, that's what he likes. They just left it alone because it ain't going to change nothing. And that's just me. And uh, yeah, you know, it's funny because I remember. People tell me, well, I don't want to see you get hurt, my so-called friends. You know, it, it's not going to work and society don't like it. I'm not the one that got hurt. It's you people that were closed-minded. It's you mm -hmm. that told me I was making a mistake. Right. It's you that didn't open up your options. And it was mm -hmm. funny because I, uh, I I had like a high school reunion and I, I, you know, I was meeting with people I knew back in high school and that knew when me and Sandy were dating and got married. They said, Wow, you're still married? Oh, yeah. And <laughs> what y'all have is real. Yeah. And uh, one guy said, You know what? Wow, your marriage lasted. Maybe I should have got a married a black woman. I says, No, you should have prayed about it and then married a black woman. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. But yeah. I noticed, I noticed the the um, white community and the black community uh -huh. are opposite on that. Um, the the younger white community uh -huh. seems to go against a, a white man and a black woman together, but the younger black community is cool with it because a lot. A lot of kids are mixed right now. A lot of yeah. the kids that are teenagers in their 20s, in their 30s, they all come from an interracial relationship. A mm -hmm. lot of these kids are mixed and they're just like, do you? Yeah. Period. Okay. So while in in the in the white community, the mixing gets flack from the younger generations in the black community the mixing gets flack from the older generation the boomers mm. and 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 the, like the crusty old men like like 50 and older they're yeah. the ones that have a problem with black women being with white with white men Mm. I think you'd have to say that the white, the white women of the boomers are like that a lot. Yes. But yes. The, West, the West Coast, the young people have embraced interracial dating. Because yes. the West yeah. Coast is more, we're more free over here. Yes. Yeah. A you lot are. of the younger crowd, they don't care. In fact, they praise it. The younger crowd is all about love who you love. Period. Yeah, especially here on the West Coast. They... I mean, you might get the occasional one, but then he's just echoing what he was taught. And right. He's going to be miserable all of his life anyway, so he doesn't matter. Right. But I yeah. mean, like here in the Midwest, 
Oh, dude. Um, when I heard Texas when, is racist. It just blew oh, me that's away. Horrible. But really? but but here in Indiana, um, in the Midwest, Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, um, <clears throat> Michigan, um, there's there's quite a few of us black women with white men, and the only ones that seem to have a problem with it are black men and white women mm -hmm. that are over 40. Hmm. They're the ones that have the problem with it. The ones hmm. that are under 40 are like, do you, boo. Yeah. Be yeah. happy. But over 40, white women and black men are just like, oh, they're haters. It's horrible. It's horrible. That's why, <laughs> that's why dude, you don't understand. Dude, we live in this little bitty town in Indiana, right? And um, 20 years ago, we used to be able to, to, to do road trips to like Chicago and Indianapolis and Grand Rapids and go to concerts and, and, and amusement parks and, and, and just be us, right? And mm -hmm. now, if I were to take my two daughters my two biracial daughters who are like that, that caramel color, you know, that perfect tan color, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, that black mm -hmm. men love so much. Okay. And they're, my daughters are a preference for black men. Okay. And if I were to take my daughter's, to Chicago for a shopping weekend. We get a hotel room. We go shopping. We we go out to brunch. We just we just have fun and and just explore the city. Right? We yeah. can't go anywhere without some crusty old fifty year old black man trying to touch us and hey baby this and hey baby that. We can't, we can't, and it's, it's like every 15 minutes, every 15 minutes, we can't, we can't even enjoy our day. It's, it's constant. So the only time we go to Chicago, Indy, Detroit, mm -hmm. Grand Rapids, Cincinnati, anytime we go to a big city for like a festival or, or any, any, any big old fair or, or music festival or something cool. We uh -huh. have, to have my husband, my son, <laughs> and both of my girl, my, my daughter's boyfriends with us to keep these men away from us because we, 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 we can't go anywhere without our men. We can't. Wow. So they just try to approach you? Or? Approach? Dude, they, they not only approach, they, they walk right up and like try to touch our hair and hey what? baby this and hey baby that and put their hands on like our hips and like like we owe them our bodies oh wow That's crazy. It, it it's it's a fact of life and this is why we live in the little bitty white town in indiana that we live in because there are no black men here yeah, I, I deal with it. You know, it, speaking of that, I had a situation kind of like that. Um, not that drastic, but we were. Yeah, um, that's pretty drastic. Oh no, yeah. this is every day. This is, dude. If we wow, were to live, if we lived in Chicago or like Indy, or we, if we actually lived in one of those big cities, this would be an everyday occurrence. Oh wow! Yes. You have no idea. I think I'd just move the hell out. I wouldn't live like yeah. that. <laughs> you know what happened one time? We went to uh, Atlanta, and it was me, my wife, and daughter. And uh, she was like 17 at the time, and we are we were sitting like in the seats, you know, where the, the, you know, where the planes are and the gates, and they have those little shops where you can buy snacks or whatever. 
Right. And, and uh, our daughter, she was a 17 at the time. She's in her 20s now, but um, right. she went to go buy, some, buy a drink or something. I gave her some money and some dude approached her and was like, and uh, I, I guess he was he was trying to pick up on her, and uh, she was like, and and I and I saw it happen, and I, so I walked up and I said, uh, "What's going on?" And my wife did too. She's like, uh, "Can I help you?" And he's like, "Oh no, no." And uh, I guess he he had asked my daughter out at the airport. That was kind of weird, but it looked like some older guy. Like, what the yeah. heck? Yeah, <laughs> like what is? But yeah. I mean, he wouldn't. He's like, "Oh, I, I apologize, sir," and he just left. But Dude, I was like, I'm not, "I'm not shocked at all." <laughs> like that's pretty. That's pretty no, bold. That's not, I don't that's know. Not shocking and, at all. Not I, at I mean, all. She was 17. She looked like she was like 13. I mean, <laughs> like, she looked like a baby, and this old guy walked up to her. Dude, okay, look, okay, I, 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 I'm a daddy's girl. Okay. My dad was like the most amazing man. He, him and my mom couldn't be together because he did not, he didn't, he, he wasn't capable of keeping his member in his pants. Okay. But as far as us kids, they got along. You know what I'm saying? And I remember uh, being at like a, a, a festival. Um, it was the yearly festival in our town. Um, and it had all kinds of really cool stuff like booths that had like, like jewelry and clothing. And then they had a car show and it was a, it was a whole big thing. And, I remember being about 14 and me and my dad were walking through the festival and we, we were so close. We, we always held hands, you know, we, and we were, we were walking through the car part and we were looking at the really cool cars, 14 and we're holding hands and, and we came across somebody that he knew a friend his friend said, oh, we're getting them young now, aren't we? And oh, my God, my dad wanted to kill him. He was like, this is my daughter. What do you mean? Getting them young. He, whew, my dad almost went to jail that day. It would have been justified. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it happens all the wow. time. It happens wow. all the time. not where I live. Yeah. I, I, some man say something like that. He's going to throw him off a canyon. Well, no, but. He, 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 he's, he's defective. I live in the mountains. <laughs> it's possible to find him. Okay. But <laughs> that's the black community. They are so used to seeing grown men with young girls. That they assume that they're sleeping with them. It doesn't. It doesn't cross their mind that it might be a grandfather or an uncle or a godfather or a dad. They just see this man with this young black girl and assume that they're sleeping with him. That's mm. part of the problem. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. That is an um, extreme sexual dysfunction. You, you know what, Indiana Mom? I was thinking about something you said about black women, like in a group and then individually approaching you. Yeah. Because my wife would tell me that when at, at times that, you know, we're together at a store or somewhere, that yeah. she's, that other black women will approach her and say, oh, you guys. You know, together, married, and stuff. my wife said, "Yeah, we look cute together." Like, 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 oh, well, you go, like, giving her a Where compliment. Did you meet him? That's awesome. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. uh, 
And I thought that was pretty cool because you she, she would say that they would be like, you know, like giving her a compliment or saying that's, you know. Or asking for advice. Yeah. You know, and, and it's cool because it's one on one. But when there's like three or four or five black women, we it, it, that doesn't happen. We get the dirty looks going, oh, look, she trying to be white. I, I wonder if it's because they're afraid of what the others will think, maybe. It is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because the same women will be with that woman one-on-one -on -one in the ladies' room uh -huh. and ask her how to meet a white guy. You know what? I, I have the same thing with, with white men that will ask me how to approach black women. What you know, how to meet them, what do you say to them, how do you, and, and like you were saying earlier, there, there's no rocket science, you just approach, no, you just, you just I, I mean, up and say hello, it's not that hard. It, yeah, they think that you got to say a certain thing a certain way, or um, all I would say is, you know, be respectful, don't say something off the wall, um, because it could be interpreted the other, but other than that, you just approach. If you tell her she's beautiful and you're interested in her, I I don't think that's offensive. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, but if you talk about her body shape, yeah, that might get you in trouble because she might yeah, think that's you're kind of weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's creepy. Yeah, but you, you know, know, some a, people are a weird. Lot of, a lot but, of guys have approached me and just said, "Oh my god, you." You're such you're you're such a good dancer. I've been watching you dance with your friends, and you're having so much fun, and and you're laughing, and and I, I want to be part of that. Hmm. Now that's a nice compliment. It's an amazing compliment, and I'm like, okay, cool. Buy me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> That would never happen to me. I don't go to yeah, clubs. Yeah, no. I want, I want, yeah. I want a shot of tequila, and mm. a Coors Light with a wine, <laughs> and and let's party. And that was in my twenties. <laughs> hmm. I was married in my twenties with kids. <laughs> well, I mean, I I married Tree, you know, but when when we were in college um before i knew he liked me because I, did, I i had no idea he liked me i had no idea um we were in a um english class together freshman year of college and we were put in a study group and we 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 just got along we were cool you know, and he did initiate and say, okay, I, there's stuff that I'm not understanding. Can, can you help me? And I was like, yeah, let's meet for lunch. Let's do this. Let's do that. And, and he's like, all right, cool. And we did that for like eight months. And it, it was, it was to a point where we we talked and interacted every single day and i see it now but at, at 18 i i didn't i didn't see it um now what i see is when i had cheerleading practice and we got out of practice at like 10 o'clock at night and tree was like outside of the gym to walk me to my dorm and and, and i was just like and he's just like yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna walk you to your dorm and him showing up with lunch when i had a long cheer day like a, a double practice on a Saturday where there's no classes, but 
we practice from eight to noon and then one to six, you know, and then he shows up at noon with lunch so that I don't have to like go across campus to, to try to get something to eat. I didn't, I didn't see any of that. You see what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't you just thought he's being a good friend. Yes, I didn't get it. Okay. And then eight months later, some random guy asked me out on a date. And I was like, oh, sure. Okay. And I told Tree, I'm like, oh, yeah, Joe Blow asked me out on a date and he's going to take me to the movies on Friday night. And Tree was like, um, no. And I was like, did you, did you just tell me no? What do you mean? And he's like, no, 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 no. You need to tell that Joe dude that he, 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 you have a boyfriend. You're my girl. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, you're, you're, you're mine. You're, you're my girlfriend. You're, you're mine. And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're like, okay. All right. But I, I go. <laughs> but I did. He was so, he was so confident and so like just pure about, yeah, no, you're, you're my woman. That I called Joe and I was like, I, I can't go to the movies with you tomorrow night. <laughs> and Joe was like, why not? And I was like, because Tree said so. And he's like, who's Tree? And I'm like, apparently he's my boyfriend. <laughs> he he just let me know I, just I, now. So you're, you're I, I, <laughs> I'm like, uh, apparently he's my boyfriend. And he's like, how long has he been your boyfriend? And I'm like, I don't know, like eight minutes. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, mean, I don't know. But he found out you asked me out on a date, and he's 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 pretty shitty about it. <laughs> and you know I, from, I think from that moment, from that moment, he yeah, I'm, dude, I'm his. You know what? I, I think that proves that confidence goes a long way. Um, you know what? Amazingly confident, sometimes when we get it, it does go a long way. And I'm not talking arrogant, but like just being confident and just sure about yourself. Right. Sometimes I've, I've seen that work where, you know, a lot of times we're so caught in our insecurities that when we get that confidence, it's like, we're a whole new person. It's like right for that moment in time, we're going to do what we want to do and have what we want. Right. In a way, I mean, we can't have everything, but what I'm saying is a lot of times confidence goes so far, you'd be amazed. Right. And, and I think Indiana mom, you fed off his confidence. Like, oh, okay. It, it, but, it, you know, honestly, wait, it, it wasn't actually – he had low confidence. He he didn't have any confidence in himself because we were friends for eight months. Oh, okay. But he had and it for that time. And he, and was, that. he was all about, I mean, I had no idea that he had feelings for me. Uh, you know does I'm that saying? make him not have any confidence or the fact that you didn't understand what he was doing? Well, Men don't waste eight it's, months it's, of their life socializing with a girl and not want more. Right, but it 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 at nineteen eighteen, I didn't know, and I interpreted it as my best my bestie, you know, and yeah. he never expressed that he had feelings for me for eight months. We were just best friends. We studied together. We hung out together. We went out together. We did everything together. 
that was my dude. Okay. And then eight months after meeting this random dude is like, Oh, go out on a date with me. And I was like, okay. And then I let him know. And I was like, Oh yeah, this random guy asked me out on a date. And suddenly, suddenly tree was like, Oh, fuck that. He was like, no, no, uh -uh. no, 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 we're not doing this. No, uh, uh, no. I put eight months into this. You are mine. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> I was like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? And he was like, no, 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 you are mine. And I was like, oh, okay. What? I, I don't, I don't understand. And he's like, yeah, no, uh, -uh. no, uh, hey. months. Yeah. Yeah. You're mine. And I was, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey. And I, and then I was like, well, if that's the case, what are you going to do? And suddenly he started stepping up and he's like, Taking me out to movies, taking me out to dinner, and, and and buying me flowers, and affirming everything. You know, you're beautiful. I love you. You're you're the most important thing in my life, and so on and so on and so on. You know, and um, yeah, it, it, that's what that's how it happened. Mm, nice. Hey, uh, good night, J9. I guess it it's getting late. Oh my god! Yeah, hey, right. I'm enjoying yeah, this too much. I'm gonna have to close down here soon. I gotta get ready for tomorrow. <laughs> we got. I got a what? lot of co cooking to do. Um, I'm just saying. Uh, well, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'll drop off in. here and say good night, and uh, thank you for having me up here. Yeah, oh, thanks for coming fun. on. We love you, Corey. Yeah, it's good talking to you, Corey, as always. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll see, you I'll see you later. Okay. See you later, Corey. Have a good night, sir. I'm just saying, black women, put yourself in, in spaces where the men that you're attracted to are. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about how do I talk to them? How do I communicate with them? Just say hello. Just say, oh my God, I, I like your shirt. Oh my God, your hair is awesome. Just, just communicate. It, it works. It works. Yeah. And you can be happy. It, it does. And a lot of times we assume we're going to get a response, which a lot of times we don't. Actually, it'll be better if we just go forward. Yes, sir. And, and, and I think it's easier for men because, um, well, it depends on the man. I, I mean, if. It really does. If, right. if, he, if he's got some courage, it's easier because sooner or later, he's just going to go for it. You're right. And, and if he can do that, then it's easier. Yeah, he's going to get some rejection, sure. Sure. But he's going to have success, too, because he's going for it. Right. Um, and, and I tell men, I said, with black women, just tell them how you feel. And exactly. I always say. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, what's that? Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the thing of it is, um, just approach and uh gosh i lost my train of thought but <laughs> <laughs> what was i saying it's something about approaching all but, all men need to do is approach the woman yeah. that they yeah. want to engage with yeah not and, and that the hard is, the thing of it is is the ones that are successful are the ones that approach yeah um and that's the only way you can be successful. Yes, sir. It, it's like you want to be the heavyweight champion of the world, but when you get into the ring, 
instead of fighting for it, you just throw in the towel and say, I give up. I might lose. So yeah, I'm not even sure. – you already lost. And yeah, that's sure. what happens when you don't approach. You're already accepting failure. Yes, sir. Before yes, you even sir. try. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the way – the reason I say it, I think it's easier for guys. If you have a little courage, because you're going to make that move. And then you know what? Once you do it, even if you get rejected, you have that confidence to where you just you can do it again, and you can right. do it again. And, and, but but mm-hmm. but a part of it is mm-hmm. a lot of other men. Speaking as a black woman, a lot mm-hmm. of other men, Asian, Hispanic, white. Dude, y'all discredit yourself. Y'all don't give yourself enough credit. Okay? And you you have no idea how many of us are really interested in meeting and dating you guys. Yeah. Hey, Miss Anita. Miss Anita came on. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're right. And, and I think that goes vice versa, too, because. Yes. Um, yes, sir. You know, there's so many men that would love to date black women. It ain't even funny. And some women think I'm lying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where are you getting that from? No, I'm serious. No, you're um, right. Because they don't approach you out of the blue, don't mean they don't want to be with you. Exactly. A lot, a lot won't approach because some of them have thrown in the towel before they even start. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, but if you get because space, they've been discouraged, yeah. but they've been discouraged between um, a black men that don't like black women and white men that don't like black women. They've been hearing that BS. Mm-hmm. And you know what? You know what we always see as white men? Check this out. And this is why we think you don't like us. Because when you see a talk show, right? When they talk about interracial dating or whatever, there's always that black woman that says, uh-uh, I only want black men. That's uh uh-uh. exactly. That's all I have. I don't care. And we see that sears in our mind and like, okay, well, black women ain't interested in us. So exactly. Why am I going to even try? If exactly. I, but that's not all of them. That's that individual that says that. And but at even the same time, he, but at the same time, that black woman sees that and says, I should only be loyal to my own race. Yeah. And some black women and I feel so bad for them, but I, I kind of don't, but I feel bad for them because they have cut themselves off from other races of men and, and, and they're willing to deal with the, the, the femicide and they're willing to deal with the fathers leaving and abandoning their children to to raise to, for 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 the moms to raise them on their own and and they're willing to deal with all this stuff when they don't have to when they don't have to when they don't fucking have to because okay, don't I married I married a white man and I have three beautiful children and my husband stood up and raised our family. He he made a family business and he retired from that family business and left it to our son. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, there's a comment that says many BM consistently holler that no men want to date us. I've heard 
I've heard men say that. That's yep. that's wrong. That's I've not that true. Too. Got and into that's an argument. True. You're right. That's not true. That is not true. And in fact, black women, you are so valuable. That's why they get upset when you date out because they know deep down inside they're losing a good thing. That's not true. Black men are the ones wow. saying, oh, <laughs> other guys don't want you. You don't, we don't, we, you're the only ones that nobody wants. And black women, you need to stop listening to that BS. Because there are plenty of Hispanic men and Asian men and white men that love us and think we are beautiful and, and they and want us and they want to marry us and they want to have babies with us and they are the bomb. And you know what? And, and, and take this into account, okay? Let's say only 4% are interested in you. And it's so much higher than that. Just say only 4%. There, you oh, know, there's huge. millions more white men and other races of men that even if only 4%, you have more men than you even know what to deal with. Okay. You'll, be out, you'll be outnumbered. Seriously. Thank you. So, I mean, if you're playing a numbers game, black women can have anything. Thank Seriously. You. If you make men compete for you, you can have anyone. Right on, right on. Because yeah. there are so many undercover men that love us. Mm -hmm. But soon as, as black women are like, yeah, I'm going to open myself to other races of men. And, and, and they're just getting all kinds of, of tension from other men. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. What's up? We'll see. Yeah. And you I know knew, what? I knew this in the 80s. Yeah. You know what? But you knew this in the 80s too, Brian. Yeah, I did. You know what? <laughs> I knew, the thing. I knew black women was the best choice back in the 80s. Oh, my God. Thank you. I, 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 I was like, and, and you know what? When I got my confidence up, that's when I had success. And, and yes. You know yeah, and I'm not—I'm not the best-looking guy by no means. Yes. I'm an average guy. It doesn't matter. Black black women love a man with confidence. Yeah, and, Period. and if you show her love, yes, he's got the slight bit of interest. It goes a long way. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, NW. But yeah. And, and and the thing of it is, is we psych ourselves out of a good relationship, out of a you scare yourselves. Yeah, we we like it's like oh man, I want to, but oh no, I don't know. Oh no, she's she, not gonna like me. Oh my god, oh, my god. she's not <laughs> gonna like me. Bullshit. And, and then when she does, you like, oh man, that's you, you know what? It it was. You know, you know where my mentality was is when I started dating, I was like, I wanted to date a black girl. That that was the thing. And, and yeah. I tell my friends and they're like, well, why? She ain't going to like you. You ain't going to have a chance. You're just going to look stupid. No. And I thought that in my head. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. I kind of would hesitate. Yeah. She's going to think I'm stupid and a weirdo. No. And when I got up the courage... And I was rejected a couple times but when that one when that one said yes and was I was Hello. like it, it was like I don't know it, it was like it, it was like the clouds rolled away the sun was out, it was like everything was great it was like I was on top of the world because I anticipated what? getting rejected so much that when I wasn't, it was like, it was like the greatest feeling ever. Well, you know what? And, uh, uh, with 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 us little black girls, mm -hmm. um, the the guys that were willing to take a shot with us, mm -hmm. oh, 
baby. They were automatically like, huh? Really? Okay, let let me let me let me test this out. Let me figure this out. And with me personally, it, it I I had my little white boyfriend in high school. Um and he was cool, but the real deal was like I said, when I hit college and it was tree and the way he he showed up for me walking me home at night to my dorm taking me out to lunch dude and this went on for eight months before I knew he liked me and then when another dude it, it was a black guy asked me out and I was like okay I guess I guess I'll go on a date with him whatever tree dude tree lost his friggin mind <laughs> dude dude tree showed himself and he was like oh hell to the f no he was like uh uh no 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 that's my girl and i didn't even know and when when he flipped out i was like okay i don't what's going on i don't understand why he's so mad that that Kishon asked me out on a date. I, I don't what? And <laughs> my best friend Jennifer said <laughs> girl you've been Tree's girlfriend for eight months. You just didn't know it. And I yeah. was like oh okay. And she's like yeah you, you've been his woman the whole time. And I was like, I, what? And, oh, what? Then Tree, and then Tree was like, no, he's this, this little raisin boy is not taking my girl anywhere. <laughs> like, hey. wow. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, that's Caroline so Jackson. When is Tree going to make an appearance? <laughs> well, we've had this discussion um, mm -hmm. because of our family, our family business. Yeah. Um, we <laughs> Tree started a trucking business uh, right before we got married, and um. It started with one truck, and as of now, we have over a hundred trucks and over two hundred employees. And he just retired uh, two weeks ago, and oh. yeah, he he retired two weeks ago, and our son CJ has taken over as CEO and um, we we're not gonna put that stuff out there because there are so many haters yeah no 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 worries just somebody was asking. but hey. it, but no especially like black men mm -hmm. that we don't want to put our family business. Yeah. No, that's understandable. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I get it. No, it just they just they love hearing your story and that's all. Yeah. 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 And I'm 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 happy to share my story because um like a, a, there's been a, 
a few people that have asked for pictures and videos and everything. Yeah. And no, I get that. I and I my, I can't I can't do that because yeah. Tree, uh, uh, Tree and CJ, my son, are affiliated with the business. Yeah. Um, CJ just took over like like last month. Okay. No, it's not. It, you don't have but, to. I, okay, let me explain though. And, <laughs> and so I'm I'm keeping Tree and CJ out of the loop because of our family business, and then our daughters. We we have two biracial daughters that are beautiful, beautiful, and. I, I keep them out of the loop because they are like the black men preference mm -hmm. and I don't want to put my daughters in that space where no no I, I understand no they were just asking because yeah yeah no I I wouldn't ask them so honestly the only one that is 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 able to be in that space is me. Yeah. No, I get it. You know, I, I I'm I'm protecting my husband, my son, and my daughters. Yeah. You no, know? I would just that but, was just me personally but me personally, yeah, you can't, you can't, nobody can um, link me with the family business, with okay. my kids. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, so I, I didn't. Speak my I, mind. Okay. No, just somebody asked a question, like, if he's going to have an appearance. That's all it was. Yeah, I, no, he's he's no, not, we're not. Yeah, that's all you had to say. You didn't have to. It, it's all good. He's not going to do it, but it's it's uh, not because he doesn't believe in interracial marriage or relationships. It's it's because he doesn't want to screw it up for my son's business. Yeah, no, we get we get it. It's you didn't even have to explain all that. All you said is you don't want no, we're not into that. Or yeah. But uh Rodney said I you knew in the 70s. That was an old comp that was yeah. Okay. No, that was just that was just here. That's all. I was just reading the comment. Right. right. <laughs> That's all it was. You you don't have to explain nothing to me. Well, no, but I I didn't I didn't need to explain anything to anybody. But yeah. I'm just letting everyone know that um in the end, yeah, we have haters. No, we do. And, uh, and yes, yes, yeah. we have haters, and our business does not need okay. to be affected, you know? Yeah, you already explained that in here, yeah. Mom. We got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we love you. Yeah. No, I, yeah, that's how I was just reading. Uh, someone asked, "No, no worries." Wait, you and Sandy are awesome. Well, she is. I don't know about me, but uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll take it. <laughs> Shut, it. Shut up. Yeah, you and Sandy are awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I I'm going to agree with you on that. <laughs> You guys are perfect. Mm. 
Wow. You know what? It's already two two o'clock in the morning where I'm at. Yeah. I, I, I need to I need to get to bed because I got my work All right. out. All oh, right. I'm gonna be sleeping. But hey, thanks for coming on. This was good this night. Was good and night. Have a good night. And uh I love everyone. Yeah, we love you too. This was awesome. Um and uh yeah, uh, Rodney said, I knew back in the 70s. Yes, I did. I knew black women are the best option. And ni 1974 is when I gave my heart to black women. Oh, I was five years God. old. <laughs> so sweet. My heart is breaking. Uh, yeah. I love you all. I love you. You have a good night, Indiana Mom. Thanks for coming on. And Corey, thank you, sir, for coming on. And everybody in the chat, um, this was fun tonight. Um, I'll probably be coming on Monday. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm going to try to do it early Monday, though. We'll see what happens. It's not going to be this late Monday because I got to go back to work Tuesday. So, well, no, Monday's tomorrow. No, I'm listen. Okay. No, I go, the game uh, to it. I'll be doing a live Tuesday. Looking yeah. forward to Monday it. Of course. I'm not doing nothing today. But Tuesday I'll be going live. Sorry. I gotta get my days in order. <laughs> <laughs> I usually get one day off a week lately. Now I got three and I don't know. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> But better than that. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll be going on Tuesday. And uh, I, I'm looking at the poll. I'm probably going to talk about uh, interracial relationships with uh, middle age, you know, from yeah. 50, you like our age, you know, the Gen Xers. Yes, we'll, sir. We'll Gen X, baby. Yeah. Gen X. Yep. We kicked the doors open. The baby boomers... Slightly picked it up. We kicked the door open, and then the millennials are flying through the doors. So that's what <laughs> happened. And it's a beautiful thing. But yeah, no Monday. Yeah, I'm, I'm going live Tuesday. Tuesday, guys. Um, All right. But yeah. We, we have have it. And uh you know, this was fun tonight. Had a good time. Indiana Mom, thanks for coming on again. I and, love you. Uh, love you, love you, love you. Yeah, we love you too. And, uh, you know, I'll see you guys Tuesday. Have a good night and have a good 4th of July. Uh, I hope everybody has a good one. I hope, uh, you know, you and your families are blessed. And, you know, have fun and be safe out there. And uh, you, Gen X. Yep, Gen X. And uh, we'll talk about interracial Gen X dating and marriage. Woo! Yes, baby. Gen X love. Yep. And I'll look for a video. Maybe there's a video I could find I can show. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this live. I, I hope you guys uh, got something out of the Three Brad Circus. You know, because it can be a circus. And, uh, you know, when you open up your options, also observe what's going on. Because, you know, you want the right person for you. You know, you want the right guy. But anyway, have a good night, Indiana Mom. I'll, I'll see you uh, next time. Uh, have a good night. And uh, God bless you and your family. And uh, hope you enjoy the 4th of July. And also everybody in the chat, I hope you also do. Let's see when Sandy love you. Okay, she says she loves you too. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you Tuesday. Have a good night. God bless you and your families. I'll see you later, Indiana Mom. Love you. Love you too.